Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the August 23rd, 2023 Board of Directors meeting for NID. And we'll start by saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Chris. Division one. Here. Division two. Here. Division three. Here. Division four. Here. And division five and a half. So we will start with public comment for items not on the agenda. Do we have any public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Oh, we have a... I have a request, President okay. Hall, if you will indulge me for a moment. I would like to pull... Where am I? Uh, 3E off of consent. Okay. But discuss it. Okay. And I did want to pull 3G off of consent. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we have a motion then. I will move. Uh, excluding, <laughs> how do we say that? 3E, 3G. Okay, second. I'll second. Uh, any public comment on the consent agenda? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. Division one? Yes. Division three. Hi. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I did the wrong word. Okay. <laughs> Division two. Aye. Division four. Aye. Thank you. You were saying if we're awake. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'll handle it. Okay. Shall we go then to item three E? Yes. Um, just really quick, I wanted to propose a modification to the action that is before the board today. The recommendation originally included just a wording of a contract to Wood Rogers for surveying services for both the Tar Canal project and the Tar Diversion project. It, in the budgetary impact section, it indicates that the required budget amendment, which is essentially just transferring funds from one of those CIPs to the other for surveying, be handled in the mid-year, but unfortunately we missed it in the mid-year. So instead, I propose that the board modify this action to propose to approve the surveying contract with Wood Rogers and then approve the associated budget amendment. Okay. The budget amendment being a separate action. You can do it in both at the same, or however you'd like to do. You can combine it. Yeah. But the request is to integrate them so that you can move forward with both actions at the same time. Correct. We're, it's not going to, it doesn't change um, any of the unassigned fund balance. We're simply right. just moving money from one capital project to another to combine the surveying into one contract. Yeah. So a motion at this time to do that? Correct. Okay. I will move. We do what she said. <laughs> <laughs> You like that one, Dustin? Does that, does that work? Very articulate. <laughs> because I just barely got it in my pea brain. What's going on here? Why don't you? Uh, let's see. Go ahead, Jen. Verbalize the motion. I will verbalize the motion. The motion would be um, approve the Wood Rogers contract in the amount of $153,660 with a contingency amount of $23,049. With an additional um, amendment to the 2023 annual capital improvement project budget, or and that essentially includes a transfer of funds to the TAR canal from the TAR version project to allocate the survey, surveying services accordingly. What she said. <laughs> okay, good. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any public comment on this item? 3E. 3E, sorry. Three. Seeing none, we'll take a vote. Division one. Yes. Division two. Yes. Division four. Aye. Division three. Aye. 
Okay, um, I asked to pull item 2G Correct. for some discussion only. I mean, I support it. I just had some questions about it. So um, I don't know who wants. To, oh, hi, Doug. Oh, um, so my first question is um, Does this work that we're outlining here include the full CEQA, you know, all the way through draft, circulation, public comment, final? Does it include the whole? Yes. Thing. It does, assuming that we can stay with the with the mitigated deck, deck deck. If it goes to an EIR, that's a different discussion. Oh, that okay. will ultimately get dealt with. Because I thought this was pretty inexpensive for a full you EIR. You think actually that it won't be the case? Uh huh. Until we actually get through all the details, and if there's something that we just can't mitigate, and therefore we need to move forward with an EIR, mm -hmm. then we'd have to develop a new scope and come back to the board. Okay, and then my other piece of that was if we have to do an EIR, do we not also have to do NEPA since it's a federal? We are doing part of the NEPA process even when we're doing the ISMND uh -huh. because we have to get permits from the federal agencies. And so that would be all part of It'll be all part of the scope that you see. Well, see, I didn't see that they were going to do NEPA work in this scope and maybe I missed it, but I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Because one of the things I I see that happens is that you let a contract and then something comes back because oh well we have to add this or there's been some change and we need to increase the contract and so I just wanted to make sure that um, yeah that we were including the entire scope of work that we needed. It's addressed in the staff report. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't see it. It's in the third paragraph under background. As part of the spillway project, the district will have to comply with the CEQA oh, and well, okay, yeah. all right. And, and part and, of what we do is when we have to do certain studies, we, we put an RFP that it gets done to a level that can be used for both, so we're not having to reinvent the wheel. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was it. Thank you for well, that clarification. Good question. I'll clarify that. <laughs> thank you. I thought the same thing. Oh, you did. Well, see, we always think it the same way, huh? Okay, thank you. I'm done, Madam President. Okay, so do we have a motion? Uh, I will move to move forward with item 3G, award the consulting services contract with Stantec in the amount of 231863 and authorize the general manager to execute the document. Second any public comments? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. Division one? Yes. Division two? Yes. Division four? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we will move on to general orders and item 4A, the 2023 award of a multi year consulting contract for dam safety program support service. We'll turn that one over to Ken. Right. Camera turned on there. All right, good morning, uh, board, staff, members of the public. My name is Kean Summers. I'm the director of Power Systems. Um, I'm here today to uh, request that the board authorize a multi-year contract with uh, Gannett Fleming for dam safety uh, support services. Um, as you're aware, the district has a total of 24 dams, diversions, and then there's all the associated facilities with those. Um, in, early, earlier this year, our dam safety engineer retired. Um, since that time, we actively tried to recruit for that position and were unsuccessful in filling it, so we decided to change our course of action. Um, to that end, we sent out a request for proposals to seven, seven different firms um, to provide basic dam safety support services. Um, all four of those firms responded with a, uh, with a proposal. We, 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 engineering department staff and hydroelectric department staff sat down, interviewed those firms and found Gannett Fleming to be the most uh, well qualified to take on the district. Um, we're asking for a multi-year contract um, in a total of amount not to exceed $200,000 per year. This is a time and materials contract, so if we don't need that entire $200,000, they won't spend that. Um, uh, our existing associate engineer that helps me um, administer the dam safety program and I will be very uh, cautious with the, uh, the award of work associated with this and we'll only use it when it's necessary. Um, we've asked for a multi-year contract, so um, which is a bit different from the way we've done these sorts of things in the past, um, simply because 
one, the amount of effort to bring uh, the consultant on board, and then the learning curve for that consultant. There's going to be a lot of uh, background that they need to come up to speed on. Um, so with that, I'll open it to any questions you may have and uh, go from there. Uh, so the one thing that I didn't see in here, how does the 200K or max of 200K um, compare to the salary of the individual that they're left? So the salary and benefits of the uh, individual were plus or minus $230,000, um, so this is slightly less than that. I would say that uh, in next year's budget, I have included membership in CIATI, which is a trade firm that publishes a significant number of resources that we can use, um, and that's that's fairly expensive. That's another $25,000, $30,000. Um, but between this contract and that membership, we're about the same. It's about a wash. And do you, do you feel that... Going with the contractor, you're going to be equitable as far as capabilities, or should we continue to look to backfill this position? So I think there's pluses and minuses, right? I think that the contractor brings a, a much wider um, skill set to the table because um, they'll have a geotechnical engineer. They'll have a person that's specialized in all the different um, specialties we may need. I am concerned about the long-term impacts of not having this expertise in-house, um, but I think we're going to have to see how that shapes out. The, uh, the dam safety world right now is, uh, since, since Oroville, the world has turned upside down, um, and finding a dam safety engineer is, is, is nearly impossible at this point. I, 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 I think we're going to need to try this for a while, and I think that this initial period is a, a, a good time frame see how it works, see how the needs of the district unfold, and then reevaluate it at that time. And what's the shortest period of time you can get out of the contract? Uh, well, we can just choose to not assign them any additional work. and okay. then So, like, if it really doesn't help, you could get out? Yeah, you yeah. I, slow down to where you're not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was all I had. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple questions. Or do you have Go any questions? Okay. Uh, no, he, he asked my question. <laughs> Great. Um, where is it? So my question involves the insurance this is for Dustin. So I noticed that the insurance, the general liability, all these are just $1 million. And it seems like we have been routinely trying to get at least a $2 million insurance policy. And it just feels like a $1 million is light. And um, and their error and omissions is only a $1 million per, occur per occurrence. And that also seems light. I mean, when you're talking about dam safety, I don't know. No? It's pretty standard for the industry. Right. And and it's in our, we asked for that. Yeah. So if, if we would like to increase that, we can on a moving forward basis. But you notice in the agreement, there's strikeout and underline. Um, I went through this with legal counsel for Kenneth Fleming uh, with fine tooth comb. And, and so we negotiated some changes. Um, we did not request nor did they um, agree to a higher insurance amount. Mm -hmm. But if that's something that we'd like to see, certainly we can do that on a moving forward basis. Uh, well, don't we, didn't we, Dustin, because you and I have had this conversation over the years, and um, aren't we, haven't we been routinely getting higher than a $1 million? Or is it been, it started out at 500000 and moved to a million? I'm trying to remember what we did. No, it's, we've been at, We've been in this exhibit C is our standard okay. requirement. Okay, and you guys are, are comfortable with that. You don't think? I mean, I know the contract's only two hundred thousand, so you know, but a mistake can certainly be much greater than two hundred thousand. I'm more than comfortable. I I don't think that we'll have good. I think it'll prevent us from recruiting good consultants in the future if we set our insurance rates at two million. This is beyond what industry standard is. Is it beyond industry standard? Yes. Yeah. Oh, interesting. In my world, $2 million is a minimum. That was my only question. So, uh, Ken, I was just thinking about this relative to the agreement that we have with South Sutter Water District and what we're charging them for mm -hmm. us to support their dam operation. And wanted to just get your insights as to how your conversations and work on securing this consultant um, kind of gives you reflection on how we've charged the rate we have for South Sutter. And I know we had some 
interest in that, but it, it, at the time we kind of were pushing like, yeah, we're worth more than what South Sutter was. Well, they, we were making the offer, so it wasn't that they were pushing back. Anyway, I just wondered what your reflections were and perhaps Jennifer would have some thoughts on that too. And Jennifer and I have kind of kicked back and forth the rates on uh, South Sutter a couple of times, and I, and I think you're 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 right that we're probably undervaluing our services a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I hesitate to get in dive into that because that's way outside of the scope of this this particular item. Um, but I think it's it's certainly a topic we can discuss further, uh, and I think that there is opportunity to reconsider those rates. Yeah, that's a good good. Observations. So, were we providing a dam safety in, in addition to hydro down there, or, or I'm, I'm confused about this part of the conversation? Yeah, to date, they South they South Sutter haven't requested any dam safety engineering services out of us. Uh, that was that was part of our service we were going to offer. Uh, it's an off. It's they can ask us for help on that. We have we're just doing the hydro. We have shied away from, and, and in this case, I wouldn't use Gannett Fleming from that. We have shied away from using our consultant to do work for them. That's that's. I don't want to be the middleman on that. Um, so, if they uh, asked us to, I would say no. I think what Director Hull is, is is alluding to is that the the rates can be fairly high, and our rates aren't particularly high for South Sutter. Uh, so yeah, we're not charging as a consultant; we're charging really our labor rate, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Nope. Okay. Thank you for doing this, and. Uh, we're excited to have that, you know, that expertise on as good addition. So, with that, uh, do we have a motion? Um, I'll happily make the motion. Um, I would move, please, to authorize a multi-year consulting contract with Gannett Fleming for dam safety program support services for an annual cost not to exceed two hundred thousand dollars and a total amount not to exceed five hundred thousand dollars for two and one half year through December two and one half year contract through December thirty first, twenty <laughs> and the option to extend the contract for one three year term and authorize the general manager to execute the document. I'll second to that. Any public comment? Seeing none, vote. Yes. Yes. Four. Aye. Aye. Okay, now we have item 4 which is the 2023 budget amendment and award construction contract for Jackson Dam Co. and Channel Bank Protection. We uh, we are fairly wordy in hydro. <laughs> our, our, our titles are long and our resolutions are long. Um, so the second item here is mine as well. Um, again, Kean Summers, Director of Power Systems. Um, this item before you is to approve essentially a construction contract with Siblon Reed um, to construct some repairs that are necessary at the toe of the Jackson Lake Dam. Um, when we put this out to bid, the bids came in quite a bit higher than we had expected. And I think that uh, in chatting with Doug, um, seems to be typical with bids that we're receiving lately. Um, I think that uh, the the inflation is starting to catch up with these contracting firms, and it uh, it, it was not included in, in in our thoughts as we put this bid together. Um, I also think that contractors are extremely busy right now, and we're seeing some uh, cost creep due to that. Um, what this job does is essentially removes accumulated material from below the toe of the dam that is kind of sloughed in over the years, and then reconstructs the weir, the measuring weir downstream, uh, so it, we can accurately measure the measure the flow out of this. Um, I did want to highlight that uh, this. Jackson Lake Dam um, exists generally for water storage. There is no hydropower at this um, this facility. Um, these are some of the older water rights that the district has, so they're uh, more valuable than some of the newer ones. Um, but this cost is being picked up by the hydro department, even though this isn't necessarily tied to the facility in, in a whole okay. lot of ways. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about the, the bid process or the contractors or any of those sorts of things uh, at this time. So I just had a question on your last point. Um, so why, why is hydro foot in the middle? So it, it is part of the license project um, because it does feed the hydro plants. 
Um, and so it has just been rolled into the hydro cost expenditures. That's where it lands. Hydro primarily pays for the upper division. All the upper divisions, yeah. Re regardless, yeah. regardless. What, if it's generating power or not. Correct. That's why it's somewhat hard to ascertain the complete benefit of hydro until you start pulling out the costs associated with the upper division that are not hydro related because those are funded in the hydro operating budget. But for example, on the flip side of that coin, like Scott's Flat Spillway, it's a really large project. So you would likely see that funded from both water and hydro. Yeah, so when, when I read this, I was just trying to wrap my head around, you know, we, we talked extensively about the offset to uh, raw water and that diminishing offset over time. So we, we've, it seems like we balanced some of this over the last year by putting overhead costs onto hydro and trying to get things as more of two uh, lines of business. So when I read this, my initial reaction is, uh, shouldn't uh, the other side of the business have part of this responsibility financially? If we're truly trying to figure out what does it cost to run hydro and what is the net revenue? We have done that, but in an off book pers perspective. So hydro essentially pays, about half of their budget pays for the upper division that is non-hydro related. And so when we're um, preparing an item to bring forward, I believe at the next meeting, we'll go through the hydro finances and we can explain that. R roughly with that, the half of that budget, what, what kind of a number are we talking about? Six to seven million. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Excluding capital. Appreciate it. Chris, any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Yep. And no questions from the okay. okay. Great. Then we will move forward with a motion. A motion. motion. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. We do the motion first, Chris. You trained me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, so you need a motion. Okay. Yeah. I'll be happy to move. We're all slow this morning. Sorry. Uh, let's see. That we, to uh, uh, item 4B, 2023 budget minimum award of con construction contract for Jackson Lake Tow Dam, Dam Tow and Channel Banks Protection. Adopt resolution amending the 2023 annual budget, reducing funds from funding for Chicago Park Powerhouse Refurbishment Project awarding a construction contract and al allocating funding to Jackson Lake Channel Project. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any public comment? Okay, now a vote. Yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now we have the budget to actuals report. And Sandra will be presenting this one. Morning. Sandra. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Sandra Zenlab here, Director of Finance. Um, this morning, we are bringing forward the Q2 Budget to Actual Report. Um, it is finance's goal to be more transparent to the board and to the public, so this is an informational item, um, and it's a pretty detailed report. So um, I'm just going to point out a few mm -hmm. highlights. Oh, sorry. Um, so as you know, it would be nice to see like a 50% lineup because we're half through the year, halfway through the year, but that's not how it works. So um, some items um, like Fund 30, which is the recreation fund, you'll see the revenues are higher mm -hmm. at mid-year um, because they make reservations front-loaded, right, at the beginning of the year. So the revenues are higher now, whereas Fund 10, the water operations, um, the way the billing is done, there's only five months in right now. Um, and so at the end of the year, we'll do an accrual back so we can get the full 12 months in. So those are just some of the 
differences you'll see. Um, and then there's items in here, the variances, which will be addressed in the next item to cover um, and ask for something that's here. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I did not, I, but didn't I, have I really appreciate the timeliness of your okay. report and um, the thoroughness of the information presented. And so thank you and to the whole team who's done that. Yeah. yeah, and big thanks to the departments too. We've been doing monthly budget to actuals internally, so that's been very helpful. That's really great. Just getting their feedback and our feedback. And, and part of that is we can do some internal transfers, right? So part of our new budget policy is we have the authority internally to kind of do a true up um, and not go over their already approved 2023 budget, but we can move things around in different categories internally. And then the things that we cannot do that, that we don't have the authority, we bring forward as a budget amendment. So that's been really great working with the departments. Everybody's been timely in helping us you know, move these things forward. How is the workload? When you first talked about this transition of truing up more frequently, um, you and others commented about the additional workload, um, and so how how is that being balanced out, and how's it working? Um, it, it's it, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, we are working through those, and like we mentioned last time, we hope that by the end of Q3, that we're fully reconciling with all of the reconciliations. So right now, I would say we're about 70 percent, which is it's really good. We're everybody's doing a great job. Aurora's team. I mean, they do have a heavy lift, and so just working through how how can our departments help each other, really? If there's something maybe her team's doing that finance can help with or vice versa, you know, just building those relationships and, you know, avoiding duplication of work. Like, if their team is doing something and ours is too, you know, having those conversations are helping. Um, so we're moving right along. We have a new controller, so that's exciting that's as great. well. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's just another additive and will help push forward and get this caught up and reconciling regularly. So, yeah. Good. Okay. I think we're good on that then. Okay. Just receive and file. Correct. Great. Okay. And then we have right, Sandra with the um, next item. Do we need to do public comments there on that item? We can. It's okay. Up to the board. And we'll do a public comment on the quarterly budget to actuals report. But seeing none, it will be long. So the mid-year budget amendment. So I have the next item as well, and this item is we're bringing forward and asking to adopt a resolution for the mid-year budget amendment. Um, Overall, there's not a lot on here. So kind of high level, the, the revenue amendment we're asking for is $527,161. And so those are, some of it's unforeseen. There was a backhoe that got damaged. And so that we're asking for both the revenue side and the expense side. You'll see those are offset net to zero. Um, and then there is a transfer to the recreation fund in the amount of 255,000, which, is because we finished the 2022 audit. And so at the end of the year, um, basically recreation have had more expenses, primarily due to the OPEB and the pension um, expenses at year end through the actuarial study. So instead of transferring it from hydro, like we normally would, Fund 35, which is recreation's capital fund, didn't have any capital project projects for 2023, nor do they have any requests then so far for 2024. So we're going to take that money from 35 into 30. So that's what that one is. And remember, sir, all the capital funds are, you know, roll up into the mother fund. Right. Yeah. You know, I did have a question about that, but if you want to complete. Sure. You can ask now. Okay. Well, so again, back to recreation. So thank you for the explanation. I was wondering what was that about. And then with the goal of ours to try to make everybody self-sustaining, um, is there a plan to address this kind of shortfall in recreation, or did we do that by increasing the rates? We took a bite out of it with uh -huh. the last, last rate increase. Right. One of those things um, that is part of what we'll address in the strategic priorities is to also 
identify what a complete cost recovery plan would be. Not that we are going to recommend implementing it right away, um, but it will give us a view as to where we would have to go with the fees and rates in order to get there. Okay. Um, could I just say on that topic, could we have an update as an agenda item on how Monica perceives or you perceive the rate increase to have affected either? It's been event? great. I just asked Monica about it. Um, we have received a couple of comments, more from kind of the people who buy season passes mm -hmm. that come recreate all the time, but it's been very minor. Okay. No yeah. item required. So okay, and then um, then my next question, if you can just indulge me, this, then I'll be done, is um, I noticed that there was a $30,000 recreation card, uh, you know, bank fee, and my comment was, wow, what can we do about this? We're looking into it a lot. We, as you'll recall, uh, recreation cash handling was an ongoing audit finding yeah. for yeah. A decade. Years. Right. Yeah. Um, part of addressing it was to go to the Square system, which is, I'm sure most of you get to that at some point. There's some hefty fees associated with it. Part of that is related to that reservations are up. Um, so, you know, more transactions we have, obviously, the more fees. But we'll continue to take a look at it. And then when we do the Tyler integration, when we go to the Tyler EIP, they have their own merchant relationships. And so we'll also look into if there is a more favorable contract we can enter into for credit card fees. Do we not directly pass the credit card fee on to the yeah, that's what I was wondering. It still shows up as yeah, it still shows up as an expense. Yeah. Um, I don't. There isn't a surcharge. Yet public agencies can set it two ways, and this was an this is an ongoing discussion with the community and <laughs> grand jury. The best way to do it. You can either charge a surcharge with credit card fees, or the cost of the surcharge gets rolled into the rate. Um, Roll it in the rate. I, yeah, I. Well, I'd, kind of what I was thinking. It's, it's right right now. It's rolled into the rate. It's right. not surcharge. So it shows up as a thirty thousand charge, and and we go. But it's always going to show up as a thirty thousand dollar charge. Yeah, but it, it, yeah. My, my point is, if you reduce that by going to another service, you would reduce the surcharge. So it's an offset, right? Right. It's just the consumer pays less. Correct. Not paying any more or less. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and in this case, um, something that's new here is Square is newer. Yeah. So when they budgeted last year, they didn't have a full picture of what a full year looked like. So now we do, knowing that we'll have the full amount for 2024 when we go to budget. Yeah, as well. it's a good service, but it's pricey. Yeah. Well, I appreciate having the discussion and being sensitive to that pricing for those credit card fees. And then there's a whole other set of fees we can talk about in a different context with regard to our bill payment. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says with sort of a half smile. <laughs> Not for today. Yeah. Okay. And I, I had a couple sure. self-education questions. So th th this report that you're providing us, this is a normal thing that we do yeah. once a year, or I guess twice a year. Yeah, once a year. The middle of the year, and then we do the regular budgeting. Yeah. yeah, you'll do the regular budget. It's typical for agencies to do a mid-year adjustment. Once in a while, there's additional mid-year adjustments. One of the things we didn't um, adjust in this mid-year, which we'll bring back as a separate item, is beginning fund balance projections, because now we have our audited numbers, as well as revenue modifications. So usually, budgeting, right, you budget revenue, expenditures, and then you're identifying kind of your cash fund balance. Most agencies come at a mid-year, which is usually the seventh or eighth period of the year, so that you can account for your property tax revenues coming in, because they only come in twice a year. Um, so you see, this is a very, very tiny mid-year. Mm -hmm. This is a super small mid-year. And then we sometimes we'll have to do another cleanup again towards the end of the year, depending on what's happened or what, does it, what our projections were. Okay. And it's nice to bring forward when we do the Q2 financials because you can see the big picture and then this, you know, answers some of those questions too as why we have those variances. Well, yeah, I was. my other observation was when in the past when we've seen these budget amendments come through, they're usually much larger. And so kudos to all of you who put these budgets together because normally they're higher than that. Well, and a lot of that is also addressed by – we took we cleaned up how the budget process works, right. like the internal transfers. So um, before there were some 
allowance for the general manager to make some large budget amendments where we took those away but what we did is now within a fund within like an operating fund you know if whatever uh, overtime is not being used but we're running over on credit card fees a little bit we can transfer those funds to balance it out without increasing or decreasing the appropriations right and then we're taking care of a lot more items on an individual basis when we come forward. As you'll see, some contracts will have small budget amendments associated with So we're trying to just be more on top of it. Right. Well, I noticed, so thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we can finish going through. So this third revenue here is the State Water Resources Board loan. And this is not new, so I just wanted to point that out. It was just not necessarily budgeted in the past. Um, fund 12 wasn't, which is the capacity fees fund. Um, and so for transparency purpose and just to have eyes on when we're running these reports, I particularly like to budget for all of the debt service payments. So sticking that one back in there. And then you'll see the offset down there um, at the bottom mm -hmm. as well, because it's coming out of 12 and into fund 10. Um, and then we'll jump into the expenditure side here. So there's a few a few projects here that just needed a little bit of additional funds, um, mostly due to some change orders, um, expanding the project slightly. So those are those seventy thousand dollars in capital, and then we have six hundred fifty one thousand in various operations. So as we talked about. Um, kind of these offsetting, some of them are offsetting to the revenue, those first three items there. And then some bank fees and some consulting fees um, that were kind of just overlooked in the past, so we're just getting those in. Additional questions? If not, we're just asking to adopt this resolution for the mid-year budget amendment. Can you uh, remind me of the, of the State Water Board Debt Services Board? Yeah. So there, it's for Cement Hill. Oh, okay. And so Got part it. of that was that Fund 12 would pay its fair share of it. Got it. Thank you. And are the um, PFM investment services of 80,000? Is what what frequency are we? I mean, is that, that's just like an annual cost? We pay monthly based on um, the balance in there, and so this one just was not budgeted probably because PFM was new and the timing when we do budgeting. So that happens a lot. We do the budgeting early on and whenever there's a new consultant or vendor or something, sometimes they get missed for that next year. So this, we're just adding them back in. And that's the annual call. Yes. Okay. It's not paid annually though. It's paid, no, it's paid monthly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And what is NBS CFD administration? So they do our bond administration. So they okay. help with the reporting and the, they also help um, work with the county when we levy for these payments annually. So they just do the administration for each of the Cement Hill and Rodeo. Floor. Okay, thank you. And my question, anyone else? Okay. I'll, I'll move that we adopt resolution 2023-39. Second. Any public comment? Being done, we'll take a vote. Yes. Yes. Division four. Aye. Division three. Aye. Okay. IP update, right? No. No. Plan for E. Before E. Oh, skipped right over. So sorry. Plan for water consulting contract amendment. With Doug. <laughs> so if you can get your quick on your feet. Yeah, so I can. Okay. Uh, good morning, board. Uh, Doug Rodgers, of Engineering, here today uh, with regards to recommended approval of task order number three with West Consultants. Uh, as you're aware, they're the ones that are doing all of our uh, plant water process. By the way, that. That's been going very well. I think uh, the overall process, both feedback from uh, the tech group as well as the public and board, as well as uh, West Consultants' job, in putting together a quality tool and product that we'll be able to use for, for many years into the future. So I think we're all here. Otherwise, I think it's been a successful process for the board and come to the end. Um, 
just a quick reminder, the original contract with uh, West Consultant was for just over one million. It was like one million twenty-four thousand. Um, <clears throat> we had task order number two, which was for the change to use the CM CMIP six, which is the most latest and greatest. Right, right. Um, <laughs> climate study information modeling that we would use to import into this model, and we did that through a process where we went looked at it at the a workshop that we used to have a few over at the museum. We had that discussion and then the board approved that. And that was for um, $228,300. So we're here today now for this additional amount and I kind of highlighted it in the staff report so I won't. Um, but you know some of the highlights that, that I think are important is when we look at the, the three scenarios, the, the two bookends as well as the median Originally, the thought was that we would just do three runs with the with the um, the climate study, the climate model information. Um, as we got further along, it made sense that we do multiple runs. We actually have done 18 runs when we helped determine what those bookends and the median is. Ten of those were very specific and in, um, very reflective of California climate, mm -hmm. and so. That increased the work quite a bit in terms of their validation and developing of those bookends. Also, um, quite a bit more calibration. Uh, we had requested some additional efforts through the tech group to have additional calibration to make sure that the model outputs were, were valid and more supportive than we do. So, those are kind of some of the bigger pieces with regards to the inputs and the additional requests. It's basically that West is. Had done some additional work above and beyond, which, as part of a process like this, changing in scope and adjustments as we move along is pretty typical, pretty common. As people have new ideas or new thoughts, or we want to make sure we're all comfortable doing it. With that, are there any questions? Okay. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not really sure what the ask is. Are you, are we, are you asking? For us to authorize payment for work already completed, or get the end conclusions, where they're suggesting that that we should do additional scenarios. Well, it's a time and materials contract, so essentially we would be stopping short if this is not approved, because our burn rate has been higher than we originally thought to get through to the end of the contract. I guess I still didn't get. I still didn't understand. Are we paid up to today, like mm -hmm. with the budget that was passed? I'm not aware of any invoices being held. No. No. Everything's no, paid up. All future. Yeah, we just know right. that we've spent more in this upfront task. Yeah. And so when we get to these final tasks, we're, we're going to run out of money. And so what? What I read in the conclusions was their suggestion uh, was to th this is the deck that you shared. Not not the the the, uh, the readout that we have here. Uh -huh. So the last slide suggested that they're they're suggesting that we could, should do additional um, simulations around the bookends and the median number. That that's always been planned. I think that the question is is what are those bookends? You know, is it one three five or one five nine or is it three three five seven? Mm -hmm. I got it. That's the, that's the question, is what should those bookends be? We've always been planning on doing the bookends. Yeah, so I, I guess I'm uncomfortable uh, uh, authorizing more simulations to be done on 1-9 than I am on 357. So I don't, that's not really what this ask is for. It's just to do that number of simulations. What those simulations are will be addressed through the next plan for water meeting. And we did receive, we had this discussion yesterday with the stakeholder group, so we do have some information to share. It just feels like the cart before the horse. We're asking to write a check, and then we're going to figure out what it is we're going to do. No, that's pretty normal. So when you go through any kind of project analysis or environmental analysis, you usually go, okay, we're going to look at three alternatives or three different design scenarios. Yeah. That's all we're saying here. Um, indicating that you have support for 357, from the terms of a money perspective, is the same amount of money as 159. Yeah, but my vote to, to give them more money if the simulation ends up being focused on one and nine, I find to be less valuable than if it was focused to be on 
three and seven. So that that decision hasn't been made yet, and that's what we'll be asking to weigh in on at the next plan for water meeting. So if you are opposed to one five nine, then you would vote no at that point. Yeah. So I guess what I'm comfortable with is making that decision and then voting on whether or not we fund it. I would not recommend that course of action, but that's up to the board. I I had similar miles <laughs> about this. So correct me if I'm wrong. We didn't we didn't have a because this is a new thing. We're going we're planning as we go sort of. Um, we didn't have an original budget amount budgeted for a plan for water. Correct? No, we did. We did, and the original budget amount was actually low from what the bids the bid came in at. That and then as we've got first contract. Right. So you're talking about a planning effort that was going over 50 years. This amount of change orders that have happened is well within the norm for this type of project, specifically working with an outside stakeholder group. Because remember, we're not just talking about plan for water modeling. We're talking about a model that we will be able to use for years to come. Right, right, right. Now whether you know, whether you agree with one five nine or three five seven, at the end of the day, I think we've all agreed that we, we want the bookend scenario going forward, what those bookends are is up for debate. So this is just asking for additional money to finish that effort. I have a comment. I, I think it is important to fund the effort and not get not conflate it with whether it's one five nine or three five seven or whatever those numbers I don't even know what those mean. It's just right. sitting here, Same. right? I don't even know. And so to withhold this, I think uh, kind of ties the hands of our staff and our consultants, and I, I really want them. You know, my goodness, we've spent so much money on this, and I would just want them to have the full benefit of um, as much information. And if it costs a little more, it costs a little more. I mean, that's kind of where we are. So I would support your request. I think part of what Trevor's reflecting is that we really, I didn't realize that the costs were we were going to exceed the budget as we were progressing along, that by these additional analyses, we were really topping out the budget amount, which I think you're reflecting. I, to be honest with you, I don't have a problem authorizing more money because in the long term, 250K for 50 mm -hmm. years of a tool is, right. is a small amount. Of right. I want to make sure that that 250K, in my opinion, is being used to, to generate data that helps us make a decision on whether or not storage needs to be made. And I don't think any more money spent on one and nine, which are such unrealistic uh, guardrails. See, we, we don't know what one and nine is. I mean, sitting here today, I don't even know uh, what that is. We, we've seen, you we have the simulations from last right. plan for water. I know, but right. so one and just refer to it kind of, you know, I'm sorry, but I just don't. Oh, don't. in front of you. But yeah. we have the data is available. No, I understand that. I'm certain the data is in their, yeah. their Extreme, extreme. But it's not one tied way or the other. It's not like yeah. Yeah. medium plus and minus five percent. Right. Yeah. That's my heartburn. Is like I would rather spend the money on something that I think is going to be super valuable to determine in ten years, twenty years, thirty years, mm -hmm. what is the extra storage needed, if any. And I would like to see that and have that conversation together. So a lot of that is will come out. We're kind of getting the cart a little bit before the horse. A lot of this will become clearer once we have our discussion at the next plan for water mm -hmm. meeting. Without authorizing this today, um, we essentially have an issue with finishing the project. Right. That's, well, I, I, I support. Can the, I ask the, one more question? The investment. So three were picked uh, for the last plan for water. Three scenarios were focused on. Those are three example scenarios. I know. We had a lot of discussion at the stakeholder group yesterday about if there was benefit to can it, three. Can I ask my question? So prior to the plan for water last time, three scenarios were focused on. Multiple uh, runs were made based on those three scenarios, a median and two guardrails. Who decided those two guardrails? That's what I was trying to answer. So that hasn't been decided. No, that was a, that was the last plan. It was a sample that was provided. Who, who decided those? The sample. Who chose? The those? consultant was showing an example based off of what they thought would be a reasonable guardrail. The stakeholder group yesterday had even a more in-depth discussion about this, which we will then have again at the plan for water meeting. It has not been decided. My problem here, and, and it sounds like it'll pass anyway. I'm going to vote no. 
um, is the decision before plan for water last time was not involving us. We weren't privy. And, and now there's, there's another set of inputs from the stakeholder group that we weren't privy to as well. So the only thing I have is the checkbook to say whether or not we, we spend the money. So that's why I say it's a cart before the horse for me, maybe not for the whole group. But if I think that we're spending money on two scenarios that are, in my opinion, outside the bounds of reality, and I've already given you the check to go spend the money to do that, how, how do I rein it in? No decision has been made. Maybe that's what I'm not being clear about. No decision has been made around, about the bookends. What they were doing was showing you, to so you could gauge what we're talking about, examples related to the various bookends. We had a lot of discussion yesterday about what those bookends should even be and got feedback on all of them. So that decision still has not been made. The button has not been pushed on 159. But, but we did use... We did develop those bookings to give a best case, worst case scenario to be able to then hone in where we need to run those models for where we need to actually be planning for. We know we're not going to plan for the worst case. We know we're not going to plan for the best case. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. But now we have good information and we wanted to make sure that that information was legit and dependable. Here's your, here's what we think are your extreme ends. Now we figure out what we need to do. It took more effort to make sure that we are able to defend where the extreme ends are so that we can then focus on where we need to be in between. So that's why our burn rate was faster than we did otherwise. When you look at it from the perspective that each one of those categories that kind of moves those needles, like the one or the nine, so one is just so it, I mean, you know, it's hard to right, have that discussion. Right. So it's like a best case and worst case scenario, wettest or driest with highest demand, wettest with lowest, lowest demand. demand. Right. That inherently gets established by the manner in which we went through each one of the demand ET. So if that if that train wanted to stop, it needed to stop back back then. But it doesn't mean that that's what we're running the scenarios on. We that was just how those analysis. So when you have we have nine inputs, we have nine different. Each one has a high, medium, low. And then we put them all in a matrix, so then you end up with nine squares with the high, high median or high low, uh, low and high, all paired up. And then now when we go forward and lo start looking at the strategic alternatives, then we will make those decisions about are we looking at 159 or I did it backwards, 159, 357, what, what makes the most sense in there? That has not been done yet. That decision has not gone. I, I, th I think he knows that. I think it's the, um, the timing of the process. And so I would ask, when is the analysis projected to be complete? So could we time to address Trevor's concern? Could we time this budget amendment to immediately after the I, next plan for water meeting. I wouldn't recommend that. I think that it's going to delay the process. We have the item before the AHO, which is important. Um, I do not recommend that course of action. What was the second point? The AHO, the Administrating Hearing Officer for the water right application, the state filed water right application that was originally filed for the Centennial Project. If we don't continue to stay on track, then South Sutter's Water District petition for waiver of priority will move forward in the December timeframe without consideration of us completing our process. And, and voting on extending the, this funding at the next board meeting would gravely impact that? Uh, yeah, it will impact it. We're, doubt, we're a little bit over schedule at this point. With the, with the water board? There's, uh, yeah, I, I guess one of those things I <coughs> maybe to take into consideration this either, this is approved, right, and we move along and you have input on what the bookends are, or this is not approved and just stops where we're at. So, because at some point we have to stop. It's next week. Right. We're talking about three weeks. When, when's the next board meeting? Two weeks, well, two to three weeks. Yeah, now. right. We're talking about three weeks. Which I would not recommend to do. Mm -hmm. And now I really want to vote no. Uh, no. <laughs> I feel like I'm being pushed to do something. Uh, I'm going to weigh in too because I'm torn. I talked to Jennifer 
length about this yesterday. I bristled when I saw this bullet points that to fulfill stakeholder requests for additional calibration years. That what is the cost benefit ratio for that additional work and did we already pay for that? Okay. Did we already do that work? The, the, what the stakeholders are requesting. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Are the first item. What's that? The first, first, first page two. Yes, that was what the this committee. covers. That's Correct. Paid. That we already did that. Uh, we paid it officially in an We envelope, already did, but the work has been completed. The work has already been completed. Okay, and, and they, they, do, they went ahead and did it, as you explained already about, uh, above and beyond, I would suppose. Okay. Um, I, uh, that's, that's my... I'm having the same challenge, only different with with the Trevor does with with the uh, first the cost benefit ratio of 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 doing that, okay, and and uh, and feeling like we're always coming we're, the cart the heart, cart heart, cart and the horse scenario, the uh, tail's wagging the dog. Yeah, is that what yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting here going, am I going to? Uh, on one hand, I agree with Jennifer about continuing this process and getting this done, <clears throat> but this one has been a, been a, a fly in my ointment all along. <clears throat> that they're they're more running the show than we are sometimes. Okay, that's how I'm feeling. Okay, that we don't get the information till, and this whole thing with the bookends has been. I go when when do we when do we get there? Right? When do we have input on the bookends? What they are going to be? Uh, did I make any sense? Well, I think there's a little bit of confusion occurring. The input on the bookends has been being received as it has been coming forth. So when we had the presentation related to even the specific climate change models, mm -hmm. there was a lot of discussion around, you know, there's 26 of them. These ones kind of fall within the shaded area. These are the three kind of, these are the two bookends, and this is kind of the base. You know, that was a point for input in on yeah. that. ET, we had that same conversation. Do we go with an extreme ET, lower ET demand was the same thing. And this is where the conversation came in with the 20% demand reduction for the low demand and the higher demand reduction or higher demand requirements. Um, those are all pieces of input you had when those squares mm -hmm. of the nine squares were being developed. And so we took that input from the stakeholder group and then from the board, and then that's how those squares kind of got populated. Now the board is going to come back and you're going to choose from those squares which three you want. So that happens at the next meeting. Part of the issue is, is I think in our, our minds, it might be a disconnect between myself and the board. This modeling is also going to hopefully be utilized to have additional discussions about the already negotiated and agreed upon FERC in stream flows. That process is completely out of our control, board's control, staff's control. So there is a little bit of a, the stakeholder group was designed and the board, we've been keeping the board up to date, I've talked to the board about it several times to essentially fulfill that role of having those stakeholders who also have a seat at the FERC table mm -hmm. so that they buy into this modeling. Because if we are going to propose new in-stream flows to FERC, we also have to be able to sell the new model results, which is going to be very difficult. Right. And so we can't have this politically molded model if we're going to try to also utilize it for that. Unfortunately, we have a lot of irons in the fire right now that we're trying to utilize the modeling to address. And a big one is that AHO hearing. We are get, I am getting a little bit nervous about getting our application kicked out. What's the minimum you need to get to the next board meeting? I, I don't even know. I, I'd have to go back and calculate it. That I'd be comfortable so I, the process moving right. is not going beyond the, the decision after the next uh, plan for because you've seen the list of questions I have based on the the deck that was shared a few days ago. There's like there was about four questions. Yeah, but I mean it, it's the whole 
amount of data that's being shared, the way it's being shared, it doesn't even make any sense to me. How, so we've I don't want to get into all the details, but those bar graphs, like, you know, right. all 50 years are lumped into one bar graph. Like, we're yeah, not I getting, agree with that, actually. You're saying that you're meeting with the shareholders and you're keeping us abreast. I don't know anything that's going on at that shareholders meeting, and I don't understand why two of us aren't, aren't invited. Mm -hmm. So we, well, I would recommend instead that we just don't have the stakeholder group anymore because that all of you have requested to be part of the stakeholder group. I don't agree with not having the stakeholder group for the reasons that you articulated. I think that when we did the process before, it was so contentious because partly because oh, when we started of, this the first time. Yeah, I mean, you can't believe in the public meetings. It was so dysfunctional. It was off the charts. So I do think that we don't want to throw the baby out. I, I'm not asking for that. I'm asking that we have representation because multiple, multiple times, either the plan for water or here, we're told, oh, well, that was discussed at the stakeholder. Right, right. 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 <laughs> like, well, right. how are we supposed to know that? I mean, I'm not saying that anyone's trying to do something nefarious. I'm just saying that we're, we're lacking information. And then the, the deck that we get shows that in the driest year, that the demand goes down. I don't know how that's possible. And we can explain that. So we have all your questions answered. We actually talked about some of your questions. You're going to answer those after you ask me for this check. Maybe the <laughs> answers I don't like, and I have questions of whether this is the right people doing the, the modeling, or maybe it's the right people doing the wrong modeling. Cool. That's, that is concerning. We're really down far in this process, and I think maybe we should just sit down offline and go through some of your concerns, because I think a lot of questions will be answered, have been answered. Sometimes I feel that maybe because the process has been so long that there seems to be a miscommunication about when you're having input or not, so maybe we can be more clear about that. So, you know, specifically when we're talking about specific items, you're actually providing input on them. Because every one of those items you've had input on. I think it partly reflects, the, the sentiment is partly reflected for me on, the uh, because I would agree. I, I feel like there's this group that's really shaping a process that I feel like the board should be shaping. And I'm, I'm not, but, I, but on the other hand, I think we have at that stakeholder group some expertise that we sure. don't have on the board that I think mm -hmm. is incredibly valuable. So I want to see that continued. I don't think the process is going too slowly at all, personally. I think it's very complicated and it is spread out over a long period of time. And so it, for me, becomes somewhat difficult to put all the pieces together. Um, and we're getting to the point where the rubber's hitting the road mm -hmm. and big decisions are being made. So I, I want to be sure I know what I'm making decisions around. Um, I think there might be a little misconception too. There's not a whole, there's not, the stakeholder group gets the exact same presentation that the board gets. What we do with the stakeholder group is we flesh out um, more in the week questions. We flesh out things that aren't making sense. We discuss specifically the comments you had. Normally, I don't share the slide deck with the board before, but I thought, you know, this is probably a good one to give to you early so mm -hmm. you can start thinking about it. We talked about um, your questions that you had, and in fact, some of the stakeholders had some of the same questions, but we, or wanted to see the data in the same way, but for different reasons. There is no real decision being made by the stakeholder group. It somewhat frames calibration, that's probably the only kind of item that we probably glossed over fast in the board meeting for the plan for water, um, just because it gets extremely complicated very quickly um, to really get input from the board. But I do feel for a variety of reasons that I would recommend the board take consideration of this item today. And I, it, if it wasn't for the AHO hearings, I wouldn't be so under the gun about it. Well, I think this issue of the environmental flows required under the FERC license is a very critical issue. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think your point of building stakeholder relationships is essential in that, and that we're, we are responsive to what they are seeking in that process and that has cost us money. But I think it would cost us a lot more money if those flows go through. I'm trying to think. I think the only real input they've had is related to 
calibration and actually mimicking what was requested for showing the years. Yeah, that was requested. But and that was consistent with what your comment was. Absolutely. Those have been really the only two items. They have a recommendation related to the bookends, but no decision has What's been their made. Recommendation? Their recommendation was to stick with the one and nine. They dictated one, and and that, that in my opinion, from what I heard from multiple people, and then that's where a third of the simulation work was focused since then. And I would have rather that third of the simulation work be focused on something that I think is more realistic. Do we know if that's true or if that was someone's opinion? Well, I mean, I've had conversations that, that, outside of the boardroom that lead me to believe that that's No, that, that's not, so I maybe I'm not explaining very well. When we went through and the, a lot of the work was done in molding each one of those components of each one of those nine squares, right? So you basically have three options with each of the three major categories. That work has already been done. The pushing of the button to run the models for the three bookend scenarios that doesn't need additional work on one or nine or three or five or three or seven to get that done. That was that was already done to build the model. We're going to agree to disagree on this. Uh, that that's how the model's built. But the, there are many simulations have been run in the last few months, and the focus, based on what the data was provided at time for water, the focus was around one, five, and nine. Those were examples that were brought well, forward. Somebody had to sit there, and we're paying that guy to sit there and run the simulation. They are examples. It's not the end-all, be-all. But somebody was paid to do that, and I think it was a waste of money. It was part of the calibration. Was it, was it also run on 357? Yes. It's, yes. But and, is there a recommendation for that being used on 359? Recommendation. Who's recommendation? But that, that's a biased no. recommendation. That's, that's not the simulation saying these are the three most probable um, items. And it should really be the median by some plus and minus delta. It isn't some stakeholder saying that, well, this is what we'd like to see. That's a biased uh, boundary. Uh, just for clarification, Doug, was it the consultants that Rain, yeah, who made the recommendation? It, or was it the stakeholder? So, so as we went through this process, we ultimately developed these 10 scenarios that we decided to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, those were all run. The consultant has then said, based on the information that we have, we feel that this scenario of one, three, five, or one, five, and nine is the best one that you should do moving forward in terms of having your bookings, et cetera. Now, you could choose something else in between. Well, what was the data, data that they gave for that, that? What was the criteria to pick one, five, nine? Somebody had to have criteria and say these are the three best. What was the criteria? Based on the information that we did with the demand and the IDC modeling, based on the amount of the stuff we did with regards to the uh, hydrology and, and the climate change and all that, that's where those nine scenarios all ran different combinations of those. We went through the process and said, okay, here's a high demand number, here's a medium demand number, and here's a low demand number. And then we went through the process with regards to the, the climate discussion on all those models, you know, had all those goofy names on the bottom. These are the ones we recommend. And then they combine those to come up with those nine scenarios. Yeah. So maybe the heartache I have here is I haven't seen the criteria of why they recommended them. Somebody has a list, of okay? Or either that or it's completely biased, and they just said, well, this is kind of the highest, that's the lowest, and here's the medium point. I'm not sure it's a, a bias. It's just them saying, this is what we feel is. It's the you can't the feel. Scenario. This is science. Well, based What's on the criteria? The information that they provided, which is when we did the IDC modeling, which is when we did the climate change modeling, which all those pieces that come together. I think the, I, I think the question, though, I, I, I think I understand what Trevor's trying to say is that when you select uh, the the kind of the baselines upon which you're going to be making a decision, there is a criteria for selecting what those baselines are. And so the consultants are recommending one, five, and nine. Why? Why not three, five, seven? That's that's the question. So we haven't brought that item forward yet. So that's coming. Right. That's coming. Part of to give you a sneak peek to the discussion, I think a lot of it for for there's a number of consultants in the room, staff. We've all dealt with models. 
I think this, a lot of the consensus comes to because then we, it will help us since we're going to be using this model in the long run to really understand if our numbers are being busted early on. So if the climate change actual are exceeding our low baseline, mm -hmm. then we're going to start to be able to tell something is wrong. And we probably need to go way back and recalibrate or use a different data set because right now we're using what the 26 climate change models and we download, downscaled it to 12 and then we looked at the ones mm -hmm. that fit the best with the data that we had. Um, I think for a lot of us, it helps us gauge performance in the future, whether or not we're consistent with the models. But the, this hasn't been selected. I, for me, I because of that reason, I can see the value in having the larger bookends mm -hmm. to understand if, if there is something really wrong with our assumptions going into these projections moving forward into the future. But we're going to talk about that at the next meeting. Can I make a quick comment here and just interrupt with respect, director, caller? The question here is about to increase the cost of the contract for $273,000 in order to get us over the finish line. Right? But I don't want to finish. I, I, I get you. No, get to get to the finish line. I want to impact this. This, this impact, this, the request that you're seeking right now will happen at the next plan for water meeting. We, based on the four bullet points, five bullet points in the staff report, we have, we have, we're reaching the end of the original contract amounts. And so we need to continue this going forward. Based on these five bullet points, we have already increased some of the costs that we anticipated at the beginning. And so we just need to keep this going <clears throat> now. That's the question on the table. Not what are the simulations and what are the numbers we're doing. Those questions are going to be answered at the next plan for water meeting in the public process. We've created this stakeholder engagement group at the request of the board and the request of the public so that we can get this long-term buy-in but understanding of this complex process and so that the stakeholders could have an understanding of what those initial inputs are which have been developed by this board. Those initial inputs are all developed by this board early on that came out to these 10 scenarios that we're running. So I think we're getting a little wrapped around the axle on what is the outcome, but we, we, we've spent a lot of time and effort up front, and that's what these public, that's what the uh, stakeholder engagements do. They spend a lot of time and energy and, and funding that you didn't really anticipate up front because there are asks and there are interests from folks that are in that room that are experts. We've got, you know, we've got some really quality minds that are at this at the table that were here yesterday that are asking really tough questions and they're asking a lot of the questions you are and and what we're asking here today what doug's putting on the table is just to make sure that we continue the process we get through and i think jennifer's comments about you know what the aho is looking at and what we're what we're staring down the pike we've got a lot of a lot of a lot of eyeballs on this process right now and we need to keep it moving forward i don't think it's Personally, I don't think it's putting the car before the horse. It's just the fact is we've we've utilized a lot of the initial funding. Now we just need to make sure that we have enough to get to the place where you're feeling comfortable with the right so the right we, numbers. So that we can get there. So that we can, we the board can make some decisions on yeah the menu of we're going to make the final decision. Whatever the things are the consultant. You need the same amount of money whether the board at the next meeting directs us to go with one five nine or three five seven. Right. That's the. That's kind of what I heard. Yeah. There is a. Regardless of what the bookends are selected, we have to finish the process. We can't just stop now and say, "Oh well, <laughs> we had a good few years. We got it. We've got to continue on." Whether we, whether we as individual board members agree on that approach, it doesn't. I mean, I can't imagine that we would stop now. I mean, we're going to move forward. So, okay. I'd like I, to make a motion. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm going to weigh in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because <laughs> I'm the swing vote right now. Okay. And I'm stuck. Um, I'm going to vote in favor, vote in protest over this whole discussion. Okay. If that makes any sense. Protesting the, the, the things we've been talking about. I told Jennifer yesterday I hate task orders. 
every government agency does them all the time and everything just gets inflated all the time. Although, I agree, we're inventing the wheel as we go with plant for water. That is, that's what's putting me on the other side, okay. Uh, from that standpoint, from that position, <clears throat> because I get it, we are doing something we've, we've never done before. We've never been involved doing it before. We don't know, and I think that's causing a lot of the, the, the angst on this end of the table over, uh, you know, I, I was originally opposed to plan for water. I felt we didn't need it to prove the numbers, but I've been a fan of it as it's been going along. And I'm also a fan of the, pro the length of the process now, seeing the data we saw last meeting, <clears throat> really am. So uh, go ahead and make your motion. I move to approve a amended task order number three in the amount of $125,000 with the for continued support and development of the plan for water and authorize the monitor to execute documents. Okay. <laughs> Explain. Just, get on past the finish line. Okay. Past the just clarification. So you're uh, you're you're tabling the current item and recommending alternative task order amounts of 125,000 to get us to the next board meeting. So why that amount? I, I, I figure it's, it's almost a, half. It should get us three weeks just, to the next like vote. Random number. Yeah. It's not, it's not well, a, I it's not a, I requested a number. <laughs> they don't yeah. have it. So okay. which is understandable. Right. I'm not right. blaming you for right. that. Okay. So then if there's a second, the motion goes forward. If there's no second, the motion dies and something make another motion. We have a second. Okay, Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve task order number three in the amount of $273,469 with West Consulting for continued support and development of the plan for law and authorize the general manager to execute the appropriate documents. And I'll second it. Thank you. Any public comment? I'll take this opportunity to comment. There was, just for the board's consideration, there's an additional timing dynamic here that you should be aware of. In addition to AHO, in addition to completing plan for water on time, uh, since June, we have an expected release of an environmental document for the update to the water quality control plan. That will include a reasonable range of alternatives, including unimpaired flow. And we need a model that is accurate, calibrated, you know, ready to go to analyze how unimpaired flow impacts NIV. That will be essential to our public comment as part of that process. And that document com could come out tomorrow. As I said, it's supposed to, it was supposed to be released in June, then July, and here we are in August. So I don't know if it's tomorrow or next month or three months, but it's sometime soon. And when, when it is released, we're going to have a finite period of time, probably 60 days, to cram through thousands of pages of the Water Board's analysis, put it into a model, and then uh, you know, utilize that output to demonstrate the impact in ID. So I think... Um, setting aside the discussion that's occurred to date, having a completed model that we can rely on is going to be essential in, in that process. So our timing is good as far as creating a model? Yes. For this purpose? Yes. Yeah. I, I agree with that. So we, can, we can refer back to this in the next and say we did our due diligence. Well, and I bet a lot of districts are not going to be in our position to be able to have right. a professional solid model. scientific yeah. yep. yes, model. And we have not even considered that option yet. So far. That may be another that task be order. Outside even. Yeah, that probably would be another task order. At the end. That was one of our alternatives that we were just talking about yesterday. No, but in terms of any information with regard to as a worst case scenario to look at, that's not one that we've considered up until this point in terms of planning bookings and worst case, best case. And and we talked order. about it yesterday. It's we like the it yesterday, next but, two scenarios. But not in today. Correct. And what I'm saying is that one can very well fall outside of any window that we look Yes, at. that would definitely fall outside any window. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the worst case outside of the worst case. That bookings way off the shelf. Yeah. 
That's 55% on impaired flows. Thank you for that point, Dustin. That, that, yeah, that is adds, adds point. huge weight to the. So, do we have any public comment from members of our audience? <coughs> okay, seeing none, then we will take a vote. Division one? Yes. Division two? Yes. Division four? Nay. Division three? Aye. You know, just in reflecting on this conversation, it seems like part of the issue is it would have helped us as a board to understand where we were in expending that total contract, just so we are aware that we're about to run out of money prior to the budget amendment. For sure, we can bring more routine updates as part of the plan for water process. And then talk about the work we have left. Yeah. That's that might perfect. help. Yeah. Okay. That's easy. Okay. Doug. Keep saying it. So this is going to be a long. Doug Key and Steve Chip. President Hall, this is going to be a long item. Does the board desire a drink? Break? No, go for another hour and a half, I think. <laughs> Just kidding. Think oh, I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay, how about we reconvene at 10 Welcome back. And uh, Jennifer's going to kick, up, kick off our CIP mid-year update. This is an update um, just provided on the capital improvement projects that are in the approved 2023 budget. Um, we will go through each project. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on each project. <laughs> it's, a lot of, it's a long presentation. Um, but if anywhere we've lost over information and you require more, just stop us and ask any questions you may have. And then this will be a good precursor to hearing the five-year capital improvement program and, the, and as well the 2024 capital improvement program. Thank you. Doug, take it over. Can I ask just one clarification question? So this is all stuff that was already approved. You're just giving us the staff. Yep. These are projects that were, yeah, equipment or equipment purchased or projects planned for the 2023 year. Some projects by design go across multiple fiscal years. Um, I'm going to kind of give you an idea of where we're at in expenditures, what we expect to get completed or not get completed, which will tee up well for understanding the 2024 budget. Got it. And then there was a couple of changes um, to the slides from comments we received from board members that we'll explain them, it's just to provide additional clarification. Okay. And I think we can go quick. Any questions? <laughs> 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 that is what I want to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll hand it off to Keen. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, he's a funny guy, too. I actually do have some questions. So. All, right. All right, we'll awesome. get started. That's what we like. <laughs> Okay, so as Jennifer mentioned, this is the this is the 23 update for the CIP that was approved in the in left. Um, so we'll go over engineering, which is Fund 15. We've got uh, hydros as well as maintenance and operations. So each department head will give their own presentation on their pieces. Um, so we'll go ahead and get going. Here's all the funds. You see 15. Uh, the budgeted amount, <clears throat> I think the asterisk there means that that was included on that um, mid-year budget amendment, so the numbers were mm -hmm. slightly raised based on that. Different, different funds, guidance we'll be talking about today. So we'll go ahead and get in with the engineering department, which is on 15. Uh, here's where we made a couple little edits to the original one that went out. Um, first of all, it's has requested a couple of things there to maybe make it a little simpler on the on the summary sheet. We added the percent complete. Then as well as we we try to schedule, which means either we're on schedule or we're delayed, um, that kind of thing. We tried to put some other numbers in there and it got it got a little wonky. So we'll work on that for the next time to get some better information in there. But these again are the projects. Um, I don't think I need to go into any specific one or as we move forward. Unless the board members have any questions on this. Uh, I, I would like to do, actually, I would like to make uh, a note. So other than the district finance waterline extension, which has our labor rates included, which is because we've done everything up until this point, it's all been 
the reimbursable cost as part of the program. So we've included that in this number. So and the expenditures for those four, it includes our actual labor cost. All the rest of the projects, our labor is embedded in the operating budget. And so it's not reflective in here. These, these expenditures are only what has been expended outside of our labor cost. At the end, when the project's done, those all get reconciled and the total cost of the project will include our actual labor rates when they go then to start to these costs. But in the budget takes that into account. Correct. Your, yeah. your budget already, number here is not labor. Correct. Yep. Right. Labor is budgeted in operation mm -hmm. categories. And if we double budgeted it in capital, then it get double counted. Once we go to more sophisticated system, we would actually budget salary in capital projects as appropriate. So when we run asset valuations, it's more perfect. But we do track labor costs off book when we do capitalized assets. Okay. And as, as you guys are probably aware, um, the way we're kind of set up is first half of the year, we're doing all of the design and the right away and that kind of stuff. In the second half, so you don't necessarily have a lot of money to spend up front. You typically spend more of the cash at the bottom of the, of the budget. When we give our presentation for the 24 and for the five years, we try to change that a little bit. Um, I'll say it like that. Secret. Well, capital expenditures uh -huh. will all usually be higher in the summer months because that's when construction happens yeah. primarily. Okay, first one. Also, share a tank. It's been going on for a while. Um, yeah. But we are finished. Yay, congratulations. Yes, yeah, thank you. We've got the paving done. There's a uh, one or two real small front of items which are basically just getting a couple pieces of equipment to put into the gate. Um, but we're effectively done with that. This will be completed. We'll no longer be part of the budgets moving forward. The tank is up and running. I have a note you're cutting in and out if you're talking to the mic. Probably just me moving my head around. Yeah, with that, if you want me to go into more detail uh, or anything like that with them, just let me know. So the next one is the Dave Away Pump Station. Again, this one is complete. Uh, this one had, had uh, went over into this year's budget because we were waiting for the generator. And then once we have the generator, then we can have pg e do the connection. That's been completed, so that project is done and serviced and operational. So, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that was one that was pre-packaged that yeah. we just dropped the whole thing. Cool. Yeah, I think there's that. That's the picture of it. Right there. Mm -hmm. you see, yeah. yeah, EFI does a pretty good product, especially for smaller, more straightforward pump stations. It's, it's a pretty good alternative. Okay, Hemp Hill Fish Project. We're about 95% complete. Um, it is in service. The cone screen is working. The, the Rubicon gate is working. Um, those are all... Uh, functioning as of April 15th when we turned them on. Um, we do, we did have some uh, damage as related to the storm, and so we are gonna have to go back and do some additional work up near the top of the structure, top of the, uh, the rough and ramp, near the, um, this one's like, near the uh, sheet pile, or sheet pile wall, um, where we had some washout at the lower end. So we're gonna go back and and we're working with the agencies right now to get final approval of what that looks like. They all seem to be in agreement with what we want to do, which is put some larger rocks kind of lining on both sides of that to keep those from moving. Um, the sheet pile didn't move. It was just we didn't have enough big material when those heavy, heavy storms came, which basically inundated the site. We had it running over the edge of the banks a little bit on the one side. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, we're getting approval to do that. We still can work under the existing permit. Um, our plan is to get final approval here in the next week or so. We'll get it scheduled until October 15th. As soon as the irrigation season is over, we'll have a contractor go out there and clean that up. Uh, we expect probably two weeks at the most, probably more like a week worth of work. Get in there and get out. Good to go. But otherwise, overall, the structure, the rocks, it's looking way different out there. There's a lot of growth. And in, in a couple of years, you're not going to, it's going to be way different. I do have um, two comments. First of all, when do we get to tweak this thing? <laughs> well, we need to repair it. Well, we, you can go out whenever you want. Just no, know it's not going to be perfect. I know, but do we have access now? Yeah, we can drive you out there. Wait, 
we can do that. We were we were waiting, like I said, to to get it cleaned up. To do the repair. <laughs> Before the repair. Yeah, right. It's it's not it's not hard to get out there. Yeah, but so I think the hard part is whether we agendize an item and take the whole board. Or... Why don't we just take the two by two? Okay, we happy to do that. Okay. That would be great because I've seen it in its various both Chris and I've seen it in its various stages before anything was ever done. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, and we did receive a grant for this, right? It's a 40-60 split up, yeah. to, up to the amount. Um, so it was one and a half million was the award to build 1.1 million so far. Um, I don't know if we've actually received all that money yet, but we've actually billed for it to get reimbursed through that. So uh, there's probably only about another 100,000 or so that's going to be eligible um, as we move forward from there. And then. Uh, well, that was my other question. Is I remembered that we received some kind of grant or matching fund. Yep. So when we say that our 2023 budget was 715, <laughs> 715, <laughs> I know it's so. Good. <laughs> um, does that does that include of the grant funds, or is that just NID's portion and the grant funds are on top of it? Yeah, that's just our funds. That's our our, our budget, now. right? It's just a reimbursement grant. So after we expend the monies, we get it back. We should be, the budget and numbers the whole cost. It's still budget expenses, even if they're yeah, grant reimbursed. I'm trying to make expenses for what related to any of the grant reimbursed work. Oh, we we are charging for that. Yes. Yeah. I know, but your total cost should include the grant fund. I would think so. Your, que your question is, is there going to be an offset? Yes. Some reimbursement? Yes, the there answers, is. Yes. And there is. So that 715 number will then be reduced by the amount of grant funds, or was the grant funds on, you know, was the total cost, say, a million five, and our part is just the 715? I'm just trying to get what was the total cost? Well, the, the, well, the construction contract was 2.5. And some change, yeah. and then we yeah, have that's what I thought. It yeah, was a lot more. And so then we can also include our design work. We can also include costs associated with with um, administering the grant fund. Mm -hmm. All those can be collected, yes, and reimbursed up until a maximum of one and a half million. One and a half with the grant. Or forty, the forty sixty split, or forty percent of the total project cost spent. We can't exceed that if it's. What I just want to know is what did the whole thing cost? What did we get reimbursed, and what is NID's portion? That was just. I think it's probably was about what two two point seven all in. It's probably a little more than that. Two point eight uh, all in, and we get reimbursed we, one and a half. Yeah, we've been reimbursed so far. We've submitted reimbursement for one point one million. We have submitted for that. We will get that back. It's not one and a half, right? You're capped at forty percent max. Forty percent up to one and a half. Oh. It's a max. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's you have to go over three million to using forty percent to get to yeah, yeah correct which is why correct why we have only reimbursed one about another hundred thousand of that to right away. just to, for transparency also just so the board is aware there are some construction disputes going on with this project so yeah. stay tuned I, I was wondering if the architect <laughs> was on the hook for for some of the failures the blowout I, so those are all things we're talking about um, yeah. We can talk about that. Yeah. This might could be coming to a closed session near you. Yeah. A closed session. Right. Well. Design criteria and yeah. rock and stuff. And so there's some. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. But yeah, we'll be happy to set up that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Ramp repair. You guys probably walked up there today. Hey. Ramp repair done. Nicely done. It's I know Jennifer incredibly boring. We apologize. Boring. It's boring. It looks it's exactly boring. the same. She says boring. I say it's very cost effective. Hmm. So. <laughs> but anyway, that went well. Uh, no change orders. Nothing like that. Very good contractor. Well, we, did his job. So that, then that's my, question, my next question. So we budgeted 437 and we spent it 224. Yeah, we still haven't gone through the reconciliation of the final reimbursement, but we still have a final pay request coming, et cetera. We oh, just, we just, contract. yeah, we just got the final notice from the contractor for his release of any. So do you think it'll actually hit the budget number, or do you think we'll come in lower? Uh, the contract will come in right on the money. We didn't have any change orders, so oh. what was bid is what will be paid. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And I think. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but 
we will come in on or under the budget. Which is right. good because we have to move to the next round. Right, I know. Okay, thank you. Uh, Scroll Creek Siphon. This was one that kind of popped up out of nowhere when I put my finger in the pipe and it shot up. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so we started construction. We designed it last year, got right away, started construction in the fall and ran into this year. Um, so we did, uh, we did get it finished up. It's all done in service. Everything's working just fine. Um, there were a couple of change orders for that. We actually had them go ahead and replace the inlet outlet for the project, which wasn't part of this initial scope, um, and then had them shot create a section of canal since the contractor was already out there. It made sense to do all that. And so we got a good price for that. We had it down as well. Don't be over two and three. Um, this is a big facility, right? I mean, I think there's 1,900, almost 2,000 raw water accounts and cluster treatment plant in Auburn. So there's a big amount of folks that get served off of this facility. Um, and so we're, what we were proposing to do this year was basically get into the design, start the sequel work, et cetera, so that next year, if you remember, um, when we looked at the, the approval of this 23 CIP number, I had construction in 24, 25, and 26. Yes. So we're still on track to do that. We're designing Ore Creek this year. So Ore Creek we will build next year. Dry Creek we'll build the year after. Rock Creek will be the final year. Rock Creek is the most difficult one by far. It runs under the creek, runs under the highway, goes across the hospital parking lot, along the, <laughs> through some homes, underneath the storage facility. It's, it's a mess. And so we've actually hired a consultant, which we have on board. Um, that is doing alternative analysis to look at some different routes, maybe some different ways we can try to deal with this. Um, also, we have the consultant on board for the sequel work and the permit requirement. So they're starting to develop the, the ISMND for first project, which will be Ore Creek, so that we can be able to hit the ground run come next year. Uh, ramp repairs. As you saw, uh, the next phase was to do the ramp here at the other end in the operation side. Um, part of you see it with the mid-year budget adjustment was that we increased that money in that budget for additional consulting costs for, for design, and that's because we've now added the stairway going into the facility. Uh, needs also needs to be replaced. So it changed the scope. It makes the scope a little bigger in terms of the design work that we need to do. Again, the idea is that we will have that design done and ready to go by the end of this year, and we'll have money budgeted next year for the construction of that, and that would happen in the spring as well. How do these things not rust in the future? Is they a different material? Yeah, so so part of what happened originally, at least with the ramps especially, actually all, all of it, is we used to put a lot of salt down, keep the icing up, and even the new stuff, which isn't salt, is still very corrosive. Um, and so for the ramps, there was the pan deck underneath. That material would weep right through the concrete and get onto that pan deck. And that's what really made that pan Just deck fall apart. Yeah. And then in addition to that, it also um, started to impact the rebar with regards to the ramps. Same with the steps. It's the amount of stuff that we put on it over the years is going through and rotting through that. Um, so the new ramp doesn't have any steel decking underneath. Um, it's all just a concrete slab. And we're looking potentially at making the steps into concrete too, which would be much more durable that way. Um, it's just got a spanning issue we got to got to look at, but, but uh, that's that's the main reason. And then this one here actually wasn't quite built like it was designed, and so it didn't allow it to move and flex with heat and, and cool. And so that's where you saw some of the bigger cracking, especially on the curves and the peeling off. It, it didn't allow it to move that way, so it didn't go. It didn't. Hopefully we've taken care of all that. Okay, these next couple are the DFWLE projects. And so the first one we'll do is uh, Table Meadow. Table Meadow is basically complete, 98% complete. What we're waiting for um, is the brass for the uh, individual PRBs. The, the line through the Table Meadow area is a high pressure line, so we're 150 PSI. So we put individual PRBs to knock that pressure down. We're waiting for those. Um, otherwise, the project's done, the pipes are connected, all the paving work's been done, we've walked with the folks, uh, the road association folks, everybody's happy, so we're all good there. Um, we did run into a couple of change orders, <clears throat> relatively minor ones. The main one, the first one was the, 
they installed a culvert after we had done our survey work that was shallower than we had anticipated based on the previous one. So we had to redesign the pipe, put it in concrete encasement, move it across the river, bring it up over the, over the top. So it cost us a little bit of money to do that. And then an inline valve that we needed to add. So overall, um, in this particular one, our construction cost when we bid the project was about 6% more than what we had estimated. Remember, for these programs to work, we estimate costs before we even do any of the design work, et cetera, right? So we, we do that, we come up with a number, that's the information that the property owners are given, that's the basis for their down payment, that allows us to do our work and then do it. And in the new clause, when we, when we grandfathered in these four projects, remember we also identified if it's over 10%, that we would have an opportunity for them to be able to step back from that if they thought that was gonna to be too great. Once we entered into the construction contract, then all bets are off because the costs are what they're on. Um, so this one was under that 10%. And so we've moved forward, we built the project. It looks like when we're all said and done, we haven't reconciled all the numbers yet. We're probably around about 9% over what the original amount was that we had estimated. So 9% over the 825. Uh, that's, yeah, well, let's see. Uh, whatever the original. 825. Well, 2023 budget. Those uh, new customers pay for the actual. They will, they will yes. Proportion by parcel. Yeah. The, the district. You pay for the non participating parcel. So, of that 9% increase, we all share that. We're going to have to in a second. <laughs> so, although we did receive, uh, we're getting one additional person signing up for Table Metal, so that's good. One less that will be coming. Oh. Well, that one went very well. <laughs> now very pleased, I'm very happy. It worked like it was supposed to. You know, uh, up until this point, we've, we've constructed eight DFWLEs over the last so many years. We've been on or under budget on seven of them, only over on one. Um, so we've had a pretty good track record with that. So now, when we go to the next project, <laughs> <laughs> did, did yeah. you do like an outreach for the folks that didn't? Initially, jump in and say, "Hey, this is your last chance." Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think believe Shannon sends out a letter when we get the notification because they have a certain amount of time to be able to still come in and get the financing. Yeah. Then they're out, then they're out, and then if they want it, they have to pay full price at the yeah. time. Okay. How many people usually come in at the last minute? Oh, not a lot. We have had one come in for the for that one, but yeah, typically it's not. Not very often. <laughs> I think it's about twice through the history. I can't imagine anyone turning down the water. <laughs> just a, yeah, just I think they get priced out. It's so much money. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of money. Okay, so Maranatha, the next one. And again, we were on a push to try to get everything taken care of right. this year. Right, we wanted all four DFWLEs built and designed, built and in service by the end of the year. So again, we basically estimated the cost about the same time that we did table matters. We bid this one on August 15th, came in at over almost 28% higher than what we had estimated for the construction costs. Um, I'm having a hard time understanding where all that came from. Um, the CCIs and the pipe costs would suggest that it shouldn't be that kind of high. The labor costs wouldn't necessarily suggest that. We have reached out to some contractors and I talked with them a little bit and they're all super busy. So part of this bid, especially in summertime work, is reflective of the fact that they're incredibly busy. Um, most of the uh, rental equipment's already being used, all that type of stuff, right? So, so the thought that we have moving forward on this particular project is that what we would like to do is go back, we'll take another look at the drawing, see if there's anything we can do to tweak them. It's probably not going to be a lot. Maybe I can move a pipe around and shorten the service laterals or hydrant lateral, maybe see if we can skate around where we think there's some off, some of that kind of stuff. But it's not going to be a huge amount. Then the idea is that we would go back in November, we would bid this project out for winter spring work of 24. And, and part of that is making sense because if you look at Table Meadow, we bid Table Meadow in February, close to what our estimate was. We bid, I actually bid three projects, these two plus another one, in summer, and they were all blown up. They were all way higher than I anticipated. So the thought for us um, is that we would 
we can clean them up a little bit, send it out to bid again in November to see what the numbers are. If we can get it down to a more reasonable number, then we would move forward with constructing the project, but I would budget that work in 24. Because I'm not going to be able to build it if I bid it in November, I'm not going to be able to finish it by December. So that's part of the thought process for these next couple of years of the lease, and that's kind of where we had some conversation with the board. There's no guarantee that I bid it in November is going to be last. Yeah, you have a couple of options, right? You rebid in November, direct us to move forward. That means we call the property owners and see if they still want to participate with the overage, which increases their cost and the district's cost, or the project dies. Yeah, and the, and the increased costs include us. We're, we're, a big, we're a big portion of that. We're, half, we're basically half of the cost is being held by the district. So that's that's my recommendation to give both the district as well as these property owners a better opportunity to have a number that can allow the project to move forward. Wait till it really starts raining. <laughs> right. Wait till it's freezing and raining. Yeah. Well, a lot of these projects can can do can up, handle winter work because they're paved roads, they're access mm -hmm. right, so you can come and go pretty easily. Um, also, typically, what happens is in the winter time, contractors want to keep their best people working. Right. And so they look for jobs, not necessarily looking to send their kids through college from this particular job, but keeping their, their folks. Keeping them there until the spring. Keeping there, and then as they keep moving forward. And then you, they, they get put into their budget, into their time schedule early. Get a better rate now. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the thought process. So, are there uh, any thoughts? Getting some feedback. I think board. it makes sense to delay. <laughs> Rebid. Uh, push, yeah, yeah. Do the rebid. Do, do the rebid, and yeah. then go back to the homeowners. I mean, I think yeah. you know we've had, we've struggled. They've been here every time. Yeah. yeah. Everybody here has struggled with that. Yeah. No, I, I, absolutely. I think the the and depending on where you're at and your and your and your need, mm -hmm. some folks are going to be willing to pay 30 percent more. Whatever it takes. Some won't. You know, the, the the problem you can potentially have is, you know, you basically have half to meet the minimum for the program. Right. When it falls out, then you don't have half the meets the program, then by policy, on the program, projects like right. this, this one is right on the edge of that? This one's, this one's over. All of them are close. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, correct. Yeah, there's 21 parcels and there's 12 yeah. owners participating. Yeah. Yeah. Three or four more of these parcels that are right in that line. So I'm hearing rebid. Yeah, rebid. Okay. okay. So then just anticipate that these will be 24 budget. Okay. And that was the same with Ollie Lane and Harris. Yeah. Nope, not Harris. Ollie Lane is the same boat. Actually, it was even worse. But we don't need to go into detail. <laughs> uh, and Do you you give the property owners a status update to tell them that we did a bid, came in X percent higher, and we're going to read. Shannon, Shannon did reach out by email to them, um, saying we're going to be talking about them today. Um, and then uh, now that we have direction, we'll reach out to them and say this is what our plan of, plan is moving forward, so they'll have the opportunity. To I, I think it'd be helpful to have the flag oh, yeah. out for them to yep. know that it was that much higher, yeah. even if it does come down. Right. Uh, Harris Road, this one was the one that was going to be our last one for the year. We're about 50% design, 50% uh, done. We still got some right-of-way stuff to deal with, some non-participating right-of-way, which is typically the complicated part. Um, it's a bigger project. My my guess on this one, even if we get good numbers, is that I will have to continue into 24 to finish it. Even if I bid this thing October, November, I'm not going to be finished by the end of the year. So. Um, it's moving forward on track, but the reality is, is construction will definitely be some Uh, North Auburn Treatment Plant, uh, contractors on board. Uh, we're moving forward with that. We expect to spend about $890,000 this year. And the <coughs> one point two will be budgeted for next year. Big reason for that is all the electrical components, the NCCs and the VFD, all that stuff is way delayed. There's still a huge time frame that we have to deal with some of those. And Ken is going to be able to explain a lot of his stuff to you just for that same reason, which is just it's taken 24, 36, 48 weeks out or more um, just to try to get some of these things done. So it's just we can only do so much until the parts show up. 
Uh, Lincoln Canal, uh, 30%. We're finishing up design. Uh, I don't think we need any right away, so we're finishing up the design. We anticipate this will be constructed this fall. This is one that maintenance is proposing to build. Um, it's relatively small site that's out in the middle of nowhere, as you can see from the pictures down there, mostly on the Fowler property. So yeah. Well, I, I live I live down there, so, so I'm pointing to myself. It's the middle of everywhere to some of us. Well, it's God's country. Um, you know, like I yeah. did have one quick question about yeah. this. You talked about it was undersized for the flow. So my question then is, of course, are the improvements going to allow for greater flow? Presumably, yes. But then is there any benefit to the system for our system in getting it? Yeah, even bigger. larger. Yeah. Well, we have to be careful of that, right? Because we don't want to put a 48 inch or 54 inch pipe everywhere. Uh, I understood. But uh, so yeah, so we look at that. We look at our current raw water master plan, mm -hmm. and then we also have a safety factor that we use when we're sizing culverts and these types of pipes, which is 25% um, for additional flows in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Usually our canals are down, but we can get additional winter time flows, and so we have some additional factor of safety oh, good. design just for that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, DS shotgun culverts, again, um, we basically got design done. Uh, we need to get the culverts, precast culverts ordered. Those uh, are also some lead times. But uh, my understanding is we're going to be doing that here shortly, and then we should have those arrive uh, sometime in October. So the idea, again, being that we finish this project up in time for the end of the year. Uh, tar diversion and then tar canal, that's a combination of the two. You guys saw that in the, in the discussion we had earlier. Um, so this is going to take, as we push through all the stuff up to this point, and then uh, we're also now doing our dam safety monitoring with our survey crew. This is just going to eat up way too much time for that crew to be out there. Um, so that's why we went forward with getting the consultant on board to do that. We can knock that out. So uh, again, this was one that was only to be designed this year start the CEQA process, and so we'll be doing that this year, and then next year we'll hit the ground running with starting construction, at least of the canal, the diversion will probably be the following year because we'll have to get additional permits because we'll be working in, in the creek, and that takes a little bit of effort. So. Both of those. And then uh, North Day, <clears throat> again, is one that, uh, one that we bid this summer, and uh, the numbers were not what I had anticipated. Um, so uh, we are moving forward with the project. Maintenance is going to step up and do this one. It has some work on Highway 174. Uh, so we've got the Caltrans permit all done for that. And then we'll move on into the street, uh, the private road, get that taken care of. So again, another one that came in actually 41% above what we had anticipated. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling with these couple that I did in, in July and August. I, I'm having a hard time figuring out what the, what the break is. Interesting. Who will do the, it will do it internally? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Under yeah. the same budget? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've, uh, we've already got the takeoff list. Uh, I think the pipe material has been ordered or will be ordered here shortly. One and some thousand for something. And the overall cost to the, to the district will be less than what is budgeted total because labor will come out of operations. So this capital expenditure will be reduced to material. Yeah, there will be plenty of money in the budget. Good. Uh, then uh, Sugarloaf is uh, about 85% completed. Um, it's filled in. This was, a, this was a concern, a problem, a safety fact risk. So it's all filled in. They just, uh, I think they have the materials now for the bypass finishing that. And so maintenance will finish that sometime this year. But the facility is filled in for the most part. It's walking across the property now. So. I have a question. If I get questions about this on a fairly frequent basis, what is NID's plan, if any, to keep, dispose? What are we going to do with this land once it's. I would think we'd want to keep it because we have facilities on the site. And so, um, otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll take a look. We, I don't think we put much thought into it. Be a cool spot, put a house on. 
right? Office. Well, it probably has some you know, some real value there yeah. on the open market. Yeah. But we didn't, you know, we filled in and we did the work and we were due to diligence, but we didn't necessarily, you know, do all the work necessary the structure to go on top of it. That's our part. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a helicopter pad for emergency purposes. That would be yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. And then uh, the last one for me is uh, Newtown. And um, you guys are all aware of the Newtown now, the, the reservoir that we're going to take care of. Um, we're still trying to get through all the right of way stuff. And I'm not comfortable moving forward until I have all the right of way documents signed and done mm -hmm. from everybody. And we have one that's that we're having to go out and do some appraisal work and some additional stuff. Yeah. So it's going to take the part time. Correct. Yeah. And so I'm not going to get to it. I'm not. I'm not going to be comfortable trying to hurry up and end of September, early October to try to drain the reservoir and get it dry enough where I can pull material out and then set it and build the proper hillside slopes to keep it from moving. It's just, I'm just not willing to take that risk. So and it's going to have to push into next year in terms of the construction side. Of it. And then our plan for that, that thing there, the pond, is it going to stay a pond? Yes. Yeah, we agreed that we will clean it we all up. We did agree. Okay, that's what I thought. But the bypass is on the other side, and yeah. we need to get the easement so we can utilize that and some other pieces that we're trying then to do. Then what is, is the plan to then deed over the easement to, like, if we walk away, can we just now come to bypass, or what is No. It? No, we're getting a real easement that was part of the deal. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll continue to... Is utilize the reservoir. Okay. And then actually, in terms of winter stuff, it's actually a little better to use the reservoir because the crud that comes in that facility, mm -hmm. you'd rather have it go sit on the edge of the reservoir than get plugged up in the pipe right. okay. trying to come through. So, yeah, we'll, we'll leave everything and continue to use the reservoir. Uh, if it comes through. If what comes through? It's still a little bit suspect as to whether we'll be able to work out the property issues with the other property owners. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. There's no other questions. I'll hand it off to Keen. Good job. Thank you. So it looks like we're standing now. I will, uh, <laughs> I will go ahead and stand as well. Um, Don't let my bar run on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before I jump into my updates, I did want to introduce, I brought with me Nathan today. Uh, Nathan, you can, you can stay there. We couldn't figure out uh, how, to, um, how to do this without him standing kind of awkwardly behind me and lurking. Um, he's one of our project managers in the hydroelectric department, and I brought him along for two reasons today. One, just for general exposure as he moves through his career, understanding how this process works will be important to him. And two, because he has all the details on these jobs. So if you ask a uh, tough question, I'm going to use my phone a friend and call Nathan up here. Um, would you? All right. Um, so the overview slide here. Um, so first of all, there's a couple of common themes in the presentation that I'm going to give you here. Um, we have a number of supply chain problems, as Doug alluded to there. Um, I'm, I'm not happy with our burn rate um, here to date so far. Um, what we're finding is that those Supply chain is issues cascade into construction. So if I don't get the parts um, to construct a project, I, I have to wait a year. I get two weeks to uh, take a powerhouse down, and if I don't have everything on the ground before that outage starts, then I, it's, a, it's an automatic one-year delay for these sorts of things. So you'll see that a little bit. Um, so uh, the other thing that you'll see is that in some of these jobs, we've used internal staff, um, where I had assumed that we were going to do, uh, do design externally. Um, so that doesn't show up in here, as Doug alluded to. Um, the, those numbers aren't in there. Um, uh, we had one heck of a winter. If, uh, if to help, <laughs> well, I still got some trauma associated with that winter. I guess <laughs> but some of our projects are delayed because of it. Um, you know, frankly, we just couldn't get up there to do some of this work. Um, and then the uh, the other big item that I'll, I'll I'll spend a little bit of time talking through. I know we need to move quickly. Is the uh, the Chicago Park refurbishment? That was obviously our big job, and we haven't burned a lot of uh, dollars there. And there's a really good reason for that. We'll discuss it when we get to it. Um, first of all, quickly, this 
First project on my list is the Scotts Flat Spillway Repair and Upgrade. Um, you just approved the environmental work for that. 30% um, design drawings are due to the district um, for our internal review shortly and then due to the regulators um, the first week in October. So that project is moving along and is generally on schedule. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Interrupt your flow. But um, I do have a comment that, you know, I've been into several meetings with the um, Cascade Shores homeowners down there. And they would have requested that we have a meeting to just inform them once you get to, I don't even know, draft design or, you know, I'm not sure when the appropriate time is, but they would like to have a community meeting at their little firehouse and, and yeah. know what our plans are. They have lots of questions about you know, the elevation of the lake and. Well, I was going to. The project manager is here, so that's oh, being manager conveyed to him directly. Oh, okay. uh, I can tell you it's still a little bit early to handle that. I, was I think uh, it too early, but I just I'm saying it now. Absolutely, and that's we'll keep it noted. Yeah, yeah they, they want they really want to be kept informed about what that. Part of what we're going to be doing is public outreach because it's the recreation impact. So it's yes. All right, so uh, moving to the Chicago Park uh, powerhouse refurbishment. Um, so as an update as to where we are, we've completed the scoping and uprate feasibility study. Um, we have the final draft of that now. The key change to this project is that our maintenance folks were able to repair the damaged phase um, that has been driving the urgency of this project a little bit. As you're aware, we have three phases out there. One of those phase had uh, readings coming in as we've been doing our testing over the last two or three years that essentially shows it's on the brink of failure. Um, we were able to band-aid that to the point that I'm comfortable delaying this project a little bit. Um, and so what we've done is slow things down a little bit. Um, instead of an emergency sort of project, we're treating this as a more routine project at this point. Um, construction at this point now looks like it's going to be in the 2026 time frame. Um, we'll begin to order the materials um, starting next year, um, but the actual construction will be delayed a little bit. Some of that is also being driven by the supply chain. Uh, when I brought this uh, project to you, what, it's been two, three years now that we've been talking about this, I could get a transformer in a year. Now I'm looking at at least two years um, to get a transformer on a, on a lead time. That's 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 after we sign a contract with them, it'll, it's a two year lead time. So the lead times have just exploded. So it's a good, good thing that we were able to do that. Um, and so that's where we are with this job. We have slowed it down a bit. Some of that's on purpose. It's gonna look weird from a budgeting standpoint, frankly, because um, with a two year lead time, we're going to have to talk about ordering things when we don't necessarily have dollars in the budget because we expect them to come two years later and right. we're going to have to talk about that as as we move forward so uh well it's my problem because i got to stand here and explain it yeah so, right uh, <laughs> um, so any questions about that um the french lake so the clarify, you, you've already put them on order no. Oh, yeah. Um, so we'll finish the design specifications this year and order them in 2024. I uh, the transformer and the windings. So, um, but again, we won't get them in 2024. They'll probably land on the ground in 25 or 26. So, um, uh, next job is the French Lake Low Level Outlet Gate refurbishment. Um, and so, first of all, this was scoped as a three-year job just to make sure that everybody understands the process up here. Um, we literally just got up there a week and a half ago um, to do the preliminary inspection with the divers, um, largely due to the, uh, the heavy winter that we had up there. The, the road was inaccessible. It took us a whole bunch of time to, to push into there to even start this work. Um, so this year, our goal is to develop a bill of materials um, for all of the repairs, and then we'll order that in 23 and hopefully start installing it in 24. My intention was to install the uh, hydraulic lines on the front face of the dam this year, but that's just not going to happen due to the late start. Um, the governor replacement of the Rollins Powerhouse, this has become a, um, uh, this is this is just delayed due to staffing issues. We have, um, Doug, Doug didn't mention it, but uh, uh, now that we've lost our dam safety engineer, we're missing a body there. We lost a body in engineering earlier this year, and actually they're, we're already down a body. So we, we're, we're down three people in terms of some of this project management work. So this, is a, this one is a victim of staffing issues. So 
The powerhouse relay protection upgrade um, at Rollins is underway. We expect to construct this during the October outage and uh, we'll spend all of this money uh, before the end of the year. The Comey North Cal ISO meter, this one is, I, I don't want to give away the, the punchline um, as we, uh, as Jennifer and I bring you an update on hydro in the next month or so, Jennifer alluded to it in the, uh, in the previous discussion. I don't know that I can recommend spending this money at this point, so we've put this job on hold um, due to financial concerns with the powerhouse um, overall. So there's a whole lot more discussion that needs to be had on this one, um, and so we're evaluating that as we move forward. I don't anticipate spending any money on this this year. Much more to come on this topic um, at a future board meeting. Um, then we have three fire detection upgrade projects in a row, Scotts Flat, Combi North, Combi South. We finally have the parts in for this um, this job. Um, the the fire protection or detection panel took six eight months to get, um, and this one is delayed at this point due to the cascading issues I mentioned with uh, staffing. We anticipate installing these in the first quarter of 2024, so there will be a small rollover amount. We won't spend this money in this year. I have about probably cover all of them. Um, so when you talk about the fire detection upgrade, is that a fire that would then begin inside the facility, or is that from wildfire that would come and put the facility at risk? Uh, it, it's inside internal to the facility. Now, internal. Yeah, yeah. So this is all about our protecting our equipment okay. at that point. And then, is there, uh, a, you know, can that fire? Let's just say it starts inside the facility. Is there a way in which that would then spread to the to the wild lands around it? So there is no suppression as a part of this project. It's just detection. It's just detection. What we have done um, to, to, uh, to mitigate that is, is enhanced vegetation clearing. We have significant buffers around all of our powerhouses and all of uh -huh. our equipment that we've really put a lot of work into over the last two, three years. So this job would allow for a faster response. Uh -huh. um, when that happens at this point, we wouldn't know if, if one of the powerhouses was on fire. Because yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like, hey, I'm looking at this picture, you can see all of that vegetation. And, and I can tell you that's before our enhanced vegetation. I would Maybe we should, uh, we'll have to update that uh, okay. that picture um, for the next, because th those trees are not there anymore. So we've cleared back quite a bit away from the powerhouse. And that same update applies to those three projects. Great. Um, Deer Creek Powerhouse Communications upgrade. Until we get our uh, legal issue, um, our contractual issues dealt with with PG&E, this one is just sitting there. So again, we haven't spent any money on it. Um, and we'll just have to see how we progress with PG&E. Cooling water system upgrade. This one, um, boy, this one bothers me to, to update because uh, this was scheduled to begin construction in September of this year during our ad annual outage. Yesterday, we got notification from one of the vendors that we have approximately three items that they don't think they're going to be able to deliver in time. The other thing we're seeing, in addition to long lead times, is a whole bunch of missed shipping deadlines. Um, and that looks like it's going to be the case for this one. I've got three out of 100 plus items that we ordered um, that we got a revised ship date for yesterday. Um, and I don't know that this one's going to happen this year. We will have all the materials on the ground and all the construction is by in-house forces. Um, so it, it, it'll show, it, it may not show up in next year's budget. Um, staff will be constructing it, but I don't know. I don't know that we can pull this one off. Um, Comey North Cap Bank, um, the design is complete. The parts are on site and installed in November. So this one will get wrapped up this year. Um, Jackson Lake tow slow protection. This is the contract you just approved earlier in the board meeting. This will be constructed before the end of the year. Um, I did want to mention Doug uh, did highlight rebidding these things, and we had some discussion about that. That's not really an option in the upper division. We have a very short window that we can construct in, and so we just get to pay the price for some of these higher costs. Dust flat number two, backup generator. This is one where the lead times are killing us and it's similar to Doug's uh, the treatment plant upgrade. We ordered parts um, in April of, of this year and um, it's a 40 week time for the, uh, um, for the switch that we put in out there. In addition to that 40 weeks, so we'll get it in early 2024, we then can't install that until we have an annual outage um, in September of 2024. So that's 
part of the way these things are cascading through the department that, that frankly we're having a hard time adjusting to um, post COVID. Rucker spill gate replacement. Um, this one shows a zero dollar cent spent because we were able to design this in house. Um, so uh, I, I, boy, I hope we get FERC approval before the end of the year and get this gate ordered. Um, but a lot of that spending here is going to be contingent on FERC giving us approval for it. Uh, Dust flat uh, hydraulic line refurbishment. Um, on my introductory table, I showed a revised schedule on this one, and that's because we cut the scope a little bit as we dove into it a little bit uh, more. The hoses are actually in pretty good shape. It's the fittings that are the problem. So we're going to use some of this budget money to buy the tool to crimp onto the existing hoses and just replace the fittings. And so that will dramatically both reduce the cost and the scope of this project. Chicago Park RTU replacement. Um, this again was delayed due to staffing issues. Um, the design is underway, even though it doesn't show in that uh, spent to date fund. We have had the kickoff meeting. We expect uh, the uh, first documentation out of the consultant in August and then design in uh, February of 2024. Uh, pending material delivery, this will be installed in September of 2024 during the annual outage. Uh, and then the field office. So let's talk a little bit about what uh, we've gotten done to date. Um, we have the conceptual design done. We have the fire inspection, fire system inspection complete. We have a building envelope inspection and study complete. We have the HVAC inspection complete and the plan to repair those. We have done some fire protection out there. And then we have the line of sight for the communication upgrades complete and our negotiations with Placer County on um, at this time to to tag onto their tower, but we do know that will work. Um, next steps are the roof. We've talked about this uh, before. We hope to begin that construction in late October. It looks like it's going to just be an overlay of the existing roof. The uh, remove and replace is actually more expensive than just uh, putting this new system on top of the old one. Um, so we're hopeful we'll be able to construct that through the winter. Um, the final design with the architect, um, hopefully that will begin in mid to late September. Uh, there will be a board action that's required for that contract, and so we'll bring that to you shortly. Um, we have a prelimin preliminary fencing plan. We may put that on hold because there are some uh, ADA issues in terms of the ramp that leads into that building, so we may need to move the fence a little bit, so that will probably sit for a little bit. And then we have a preliminary cost for the fueling station out there. Um, but that is an extremely long lead time um, for uh, for that construction. So that's where we are there. Um, Combe South Access Road, construction is 95% complete. We have a little bit of uh, fencing work that needs to be completed out there, and that'll happen in the next uh, three weeks or so. And then the Fall Creek Diversion, <laughs> Fall Creek Diversion Improvements um, are, uh, we have all the materials on the ground and uh, that work was delayed by the harsh winter. We'll get to it uh, in the next, either late this year or uh, middle of next year, and that'll be constructed by in-house uh, forces. Will this still be on um, wooden elevation, or are those wooden things going to be replaced? So the diversion flume is uh -huh. wooden posts. The main flume, which is in the foreground on this picture, is, yeah. is, is steel. Um, so the, the diversion flume is actually the one you kind of see behind it there. So that will be on in wood. So. All right, and then the trucks are kind of boring. We've ordered all the trucks. They're here. That's and great. So, you got all your trucks. Yeah. So with that, oh, no. I'm just going to go through these. We've ordered this stuff, and then we'll get to Steve. And it's Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my, my report is the boring one. It's all vehicles on and off road. Uh, so our uh, function key maintenance is uh, on and off road vehicles purchases to replace existing outdated or non compliant equipment. Uh, currently, have received our one and a half ton dump trucks. Both of them are being fitted for uh, district use by fleet as as we speak. They're on site. Um, they will. Again, we will surplus and, and, uh, and uh, auction off the vehicles that had that they were replacing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, they, we bought one in half ton to util, best utilize them or replace uh, existing one ton trucks. But those are have been purchased and have been received. The side-by-side -side was purchased and received and is in service for our vegetation control uh, division. Again, replaced a outdated side-by-side uh, -side that will be sent to auction. The excavator, good and bad news, we, we, we received it. It was shipped to the yard yesterday. We refused shipment. Uh, at, during inspection, uh, did not meet our bid specifications, so uh, there were some mandatory pieces, the options that were not on it, that, so we refused it and are awaiting the correct uh, shipment expected within the next two to three months, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, mini excavator, again, will, it's going to be built. We anticipate uh, receiving it December 31st, uh, same as uh, our one and a half ton flatbed uh, is being built at this time. Hope to receive it by end of year and replace existing assets that's outdated. And our last two have been uh, in the capital project since June of 2022. Uh, board approval in June. We entered a purchase contract in the June of that year. We still have not received them. Supposedly they're being built. We should receive one in December, second one first quarter 2024. Realistically, we're probably going to see both of them first quarter 2024. Again, supply chain issues. This one really had to do with the electronics, uh, engine electronics. They were unable to receive the parts and still have difficulty obtaining them for this size uh, asset. Again, same, the two five-year dump trucks, both been on order since 2022. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good morning, board. Chip Close, Director of Water Operations. Similarly, mine is pretty light and involves a lot of vehicles, but we'll walk you through some of them. So, first off, we have the E George PLC replacement. That's the little programmable logic controller. Basically, it's the computer that runs the treatment plant. It's out of date, no longer supported by the manufacturer, so we have ordered a replacement and much like everybody else is stating it's hard to get the parts but we are still fingers crossed that it will get done by the end of the year. Low Marika chemical tanks, these are the tanks at the treatment plants that hold all of the chemicals, the bleach, the caustic, the aluminum sulfate. Uh, our goal is to have redundancy for each of those chemicals at every treatment plant. Low Marika does not yet have that so that's why we ordered these two tanks. Tanks have been ordered, uh, engineering has completed the design, and so we're moving into construction with our maintenance. So we anticipate this one will be completed by the end of the year. Vehicles, we have three half-ton trucks. We ordered them all, I don't know, two months ago, and they are Toyotas as the replacement. Toyota is telling us six to eight months. So fingers crossed those show up by the end of the year. Automated gating head gates. This is the one we were excited about. We applied for a grant. Unfortunately, we did not get there. So we are reassessing where, uh, if we're going to pick one to uh, put one in on our own dime, we are reassessing the best location. We'll probably pump this one to 2024, but we haven't given up on it yet. And in fact, we now have the one Rubicon gate at the Hemp Hill project, and we're playing with it, testing it, and so. Uh, we hope to take what we learned from Hemp Hill and apply it to our next order. And then last but not least, we had a three-quarter ton truck. This one was on the lot. It's done, it's purchased, it's complete. Quick. Are there any questions? All right, so stay tuned. The next item um, coming before the board related to capital, we'll talk about five-year capital, we'll talk about hydro finances, and then we'll talk about proposed 2024 operating capital budget. Uh, do any members of the public have any questions about the capital budget? Okay, so we'll move on to the 
All right. Thank you, President Hall. This item will be fairly quick. As the board is aware, um, the board adopted a strategic plan on April 12th of 2023. So as part of our annual budgeting process, we will always bring forth an item that kind of revisits the mission, vision, values, strategic plan priorities, progress made to date, and then the primary purpose is to receive input from the board on any priorities you would like change so that we can make sure to include them in the proposed budget that's coming up. This particular plan has been in place for, let's see, three months. So little progress has been made, but um, I thought we'd talk a little bit about it. I wasn't gonna spend a whole lot of time. Um, I do wanna point out the table in the back will kind of be utilized as a tool for tracking progress made. Um, but please also let me know if you desire any additional information related to any of these priorities, because we're happy to track that, find that for you. So we have the goal and objective. So each strategic priority, there's five of them. They had a series of goals and then objectives, which are essentially tasks that once implemented, hopefully will facilitate meeting that strategic priority. Strategic priority one was long-term infrastructure and water supply reliability. NID will plan and invest in infrastructure and water supply re reliability to maintain and improve service levels and revenue. There was a typo. In the, as you'll see, the spreadsheet it has the goals and objectives. The goal is in bold. The objectives are in regular text underneath the goal. We talk about the progress, um, budget alignment, and then any proposed changes we're making. We have a couple proposed changes just related to due dates in 2023. Um, we didn't get off to, you know, we haven't got as much done since April as I had hoped we would, but we're getting there. So the only change we're pro um, promoting or asking for is for the first item, evaluate, develop a five-year tree water master plan. And so this was a objective to evaluate regulations, consolidation, and replacement requirements for all treatment plants by the end of 2023. Um, this item will go into 2024. So I did recommend we change the date. It says 2023, but we meant 2024. So thank you, Karen, for a good catch. <laughs> Other than that, we have no proposed changes. And then you'll see under the budget alignment, identify if we are putting, you know, there will be resources in the budget for 2023 or if it's just, or 2024, excuse me, or if it's just not required. A lot of items are staff resource intensive, so you'll see them not necessarily identified in the budget as a, an expenditure related to a strategic priority, but it will, you know, be rolled into the overall salaries. Does anybody have any input on strategic priority one or anything you'd like to see modified or added or are we in general agreement with moving forward? For me, it just reinforces the importance of keeping water on track and I do think that that forms the elements uh, very directly. You know, and I All right, I want to move on until everyone's ready. Strategic priority one, oh, ready, ready? Okay, I see thumbs up. Strategic priority two, employee engagement. This is, might be my favorite one because it is somewhat the most fun. Um, it is NID will prioritize and invest in our employees to attract and retain top talent and increase employee engagement. We are not proposing any changes this year. Uh, many of the items have been started and a lot of the items will be ongoing. Um, but I did get a request, which we are more than happy to do, is to bring forward our employee surveys for review for the board, which we will do in the near future. We've completed two so far. Um, we have developed a couple of strategies for implementing or addressing concerns that we've seen come out of the survey. So we'll bring that forward and have a great discussion about it. That, I'll just bring up uh, Ricky and I talked about wanting uh, to recognize it. Mm, um, right. Having to do a little more, uh, the last time we just take pictures. <laughs> And we talk about can we bring them into the boardroom? Can we have a five minute break? Have yeah, that kind of stuff for the anniversary. So yeah. yeah, it's hard. We do get a lot. A lot of um, staff members are not wanting to um, be on camera or necessarily step foot in the boardroom. Um, well, but can we go out there and see them in the shop? <laughs> It's something, something why don't we but why don't we kind of touch bases offline about it and then we can maybe figure out another option would be for those who would be willing to come in it would be wonderful and we can personally yeah. thank them and if they didn't want to come 
And as we do offer for the folks that are retiring, when we have the board adopts a resolution of recognition of them, we always invite them to come in. Exactly. The couple have come in. Yeah. Two cents. Two cents. Who was she retired? It was. That was the last one I remember. No, we had someone recently, Nancy. Oh, Nancy right. came yeah, in. That's right. Yes. So we try. Yeah, and Nancy specifically, um, the old budget analyst, we were able to recognize her. We have a couple of um, retirements coming up, so we'll try again. Yes. Maybe a, a balloon drop. Well, something. <laughs> All right. Strategic three watershed stewardship and resiliency. Uh, we also had a Proposed change and that end date should be 2024. So this strategic priority for the first one, um, this strategic priority is related to NID will protect and improve the quality and health of our watersheds and enhance our water supply. So we are chugging along, doing great. Any requested changes? I know it's hard to think in the sense of changing when it was just adopted. But. Yeah, it was just adopted. I guess the only thing I would maybe add to this and perhaps others would be that when there is a something, you know, when you say in progress um, or there's a specific project in the, in the sense of watershed that we get to hear about what's being proposed. You know, because we get to keep up with it. Oh, yeah, this is our priority in process. Yeah, well, and more, that's a great, we could add another column to identify what the in progress actually means. Um, and then we can also, we'll continue with our uh, annual update for each department. Mm -hmm. We've been kind of tied up in the plan for water, so we'll start getting those back in. All right, so next time we'll add a column. Financial sustainability NID will develop a sustainable financial model that manages and obtains funds necessary to ensure long-term delivery of water. There are a number of changes. We are, some of it is moving, just bumping it out a couple of months. Um, we are in process of several items, but still have some work to do. A lot of it has to do with untangling of all the financials, and we bit off a lot recently. But the good news is we have Sandra here, we have a new controller, so we're feeling really good. Um, I do have a question just about the 218 process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've issued the consultant contract, good. Um, complete analysis by third quarter in process. So, is that so? Does that mean we we issued the contract? You guys have the uh, the balls in the, our court. So, the we analysis or sort of like where is this? No. So, the consultant requests piles and piles of information. A lot of that information is related to development of longer term plans. Mm -hmm. So we have it done. It is waiting for review for me from me and then we will start shipping it back out to the consultant. And then they'll start the number crunching. Okay. And then we do expect still uh, to get the full rate study by the end of this year or before the end of the year? No, that's why I moved the end date to 2024. Oh, the, the objective was complete full rate study and public outreach by fourth quarter 2023 and implement new rates in 2024. The public outreach and the complete rate study will be pushed to the first half of 2024 and then we'll implement new rates still in 2024. Okay. We just have to time them with bill issuance. Yeah. Thanks. And then lastly, strategic priority number five, technology and innovation investments. NID will integrate technology and data collection to ensure efficiency, knowledge, and system security to decrease costs and increase productivity. And we're not proposing any change. Uh, one neat thing that um, Greg has taken the lead on is we have an internal committee that is called the IT Implementation Steering IT Committee. IT the IT SIC. IT Strategic Committee. IT yeah. is sick. It's not the, no, the IT SIC. So one of those things, you know, with the different departments, yeah. and we house a lot of data, and a lot of the data overlaps for different reasons, we are consolidating the prioritization of 
IT projects, but also reviewing them on a more holistic level so we are not ending up with all these little they data being collected differently or different projects going on for the same reasons, trying to be more efficient in our view of it. So, um, and then even what might be interesting is maybe bring an item, bringing an overview of the it's six and the work done to the board. Sure. Yeah, it's a staff team and there are, it's not just department heads, it's people who actually use the tools and use the data. Yeah. And that's been going on for what, six months now? Probably. Yeah, probably about six months. Right. Yep. Maybe four, four. four. Yeah. yeah. So Jen, I have a question back on recreation revenue. Mm -hmm. So we're going to complete the analysis of the full fund recovery um, at the end of this year, but we don't make changes to the rates until fourth quarter 2024. And I'm just wondering. You make changes every year? That's a mistake. Let me just fix that. We update rates every single year for rec. Right. So, so, yeah. 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 It's just that, let me just fix the year. It should be an ongoing. The but the idea that we have for this ana rate analysis for full cost recovery, it's not essentially that we're going to be, I mean, you could, the board could say we're going to raise rates by 40%. I don't know if that's palatable to anybody. Um, it's more to look at what the rate should be if we were to have full cost recovery, and then maybe develop a board agreed upon plan on trying to get there, or identifying other sources of non-fee or ratepayer revenue to offset those. So we'll have that discussion. Yeah, likely this year's getting yeah. piled up very quickly, but we're we're gonna try. Yeah, this year, so remember, we only have one meeting in November, one meeting in December, and we have a lot of budgeting in there. So we got start some time moves very fast in the fall. Yeah. So the way I see it is somebody's main priority. Just seeing there's people coming to the campgrounds. Yeah. Because those are being funded by Or by, by Hydro. Yes. It's, well, it's being subsidized by Hydro, and so there's a, a you know, even treated water has a raw water component to it. Yeah. So you could definitely say it's being Somebody's paying me. Someone is paying for it. And all those people are from out of county or out of district. I wonder if we were done to find out. Yeah, Monica knows. So I'd have to ask her. So with that, any other questions? All right, we'll keep uh, checking along and we'll bring updates back to the board. Um, and then we have a couple of specialized items we'll bring regarding employee engagement. The it's sick recreation, so stay tuned for those. Thank you to everyone for their good work on this. And any members of the public have any questions about our strategic plan message? Um, then we will go on to the general manager's update. I will keep it very brief. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with the Nevada County Seniors in Retirement Group, fun group. If anyone ever has not, they're always looking for speakers. So, and there's also Placer County service as well. Um, I highly recommend it. So uh, we we get re oftentimes the groups will reach out to us. We'll um, pass it along if anyone's interested. And they're a fun group. Well, I also spoke to the Democratic Club of Lincoln Hill, which is also fun which happened to be in the same week that we did a tour of Kevin Kiley. So I had bookends. <laughs> <laughs> I had bookends of Mr. Kiley, Congressman Kiley, and the Democratic Club, so it was great. And we have Collaboration Day coming up in Nevada County. When is that, September? Friday the 8th. September 8th, if anyone's interested, the county is organizing a community event for agencies in Nevada County to provide information called Collaboration Day. We're going to have a booth, and if anyone wants to work at the booth, let us know. We have spots available for you. And that's it. So, Ricky, we'll uh, start. Okay, well, I don't have much to report. I went to the opening of the fair. It was, as always, wonderful and fun and inspirational. And now we get Chris. Also, at the opening of the fair. Kirk, and a shout out to Jennifer in the paper for 
That's not just me in the paper. It doesn't say who was. It's an alliance. It says who might submit it to the union. That means somebody did. Oh, I, I did. I spelled Jennifer's name wrong. Oh, <laughs> That was you? Anyway, I just. Yeah. It was me. You also didn't know when Leap Day was, I heard. No, just pleased that it happened. Really pleased that it happened. Really uh, pleased that the article Put in there. I told him if you want to get your picture in favor of the fire department, you got to buy ice cream for the board. Oh, there you go. I like that rule. <laughs> Even though she didn't like the picture in the paper. I'm not the only picture in the paper. I believe Trevor is in the paper too. And Karen. Karen. And Karen. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's all my report. <laughs> Good job. I'm just very pleased with, with this. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most appropriate thing we can be doing for. Right. Not a you know, unfunded mandate from the state of the fish. Think he's going to come through with any money? Because he's your buddy? <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's we're right. continuing the conversation. That's Good. Uh, so I did basically the same things. So went to the opening of the fair. Was, I haven't been to the county fair in, I think, a decade. And uh, remember how beautiful it is. Uh, definitely we'll go next year. And I want to thank uh, Congressman. Uh, Kylie for coming out and talking to us and um, having a vested interest. I know he was talking to uh, Yuba I think a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. and, uh, or no, Lamalpa was. And he talked to Yuba uh, the week before that. So um, we got to do everything we can to shine a light on what's going on with these uh, special districts. This is the first time I've been in the union since high school. Really? I think that time I hit the photographer with a golf ball. I told him, you're in the wrong space. And he said, no, you won't hit me. <laughs> Trevor is definitely by guy street then. <laughs> and I was also I met with Kevin Kiley, so that was a really uh, great discussion. I think we spanned more than just uh, Scott Splat talked a lot about the regulatory environment and the burden that that puts on our district and our management in California generally. So that was a very interesting conversation. And then with Ricky, she and I uh, did a presentation for the Auburn area Democratic oh, Club. Oh, we did do that. Yeah. So uh, again, the bookends were covered, and we did it. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's and the it. The roadshow continues. Don't we have a date with? AAUW? Yes, the uh, American Association of University Women, North uh, Nevada County. That's in November. Yeah. So with that? Oh, the hoedown's coming up, too. Oh, yeah, I'm going to the hoedown. Oh, that's right. I've got yeah. my cowboy boots. What is that? Is that the farm? Farm bureau. Yeah, my but cowboy hat. Uh, Mount Pleasant. That's better. Yeah. Come to the hoedown. It'll be fun. Okay, with that, shall we call it a day? All right, we are. Thank you.